We got video. We got audio. It's ready to go in three, two, one. Come, the stars await, and we mustn't keep them. Come! Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to CORE. This is CORE for Friday, March 15th, 2024. And congratulations to anyone celebrating the death of Caesar Augustus, who was stabbed in the back by his friend Brutus. Uh, that's why they call it the Ides of March, I think, because it happened today in the year something, something long time ago. I don't know the day. <laughs> well, once again, <laughs> everything I learned, I learned from CORE. <laughs> Yep, we're here with the hard facts. I, I can see it now. Someone goes to work tomorrow, uh, for Saturday for some reason, and they go, hey, you know, uh, Caesar got stabbed by Brutus. That's mm -hmm. why they call it the Ides of March. Yep, at two Brutus. Some years ago. Yep. And someone goes, what? <laughs> no, <laughs> this is that joke, that Seinfeld joke where Jerry tells Elaine that um, Tolstoy coined the phrase war what is it good for and she went and told some publisher or some russian guy that and it screwed up her job so yeah that's what i'm doing i'm giving you guys bad information uh I'm maybe even gaslighting somebody and now you can go and spread this poor information uh real quick it was 44 bc is when it happened all right it was a while ago bc was before uh cryptocurrency uh, anyway, we're here, and uh, we're glad yes. you're. We're glad John's back. John was, uh, of course, moving. We're gonna... I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at the effort, not so much the joke. But... Yeah, no, the joke's terrible. <laughs> what starts with C that I can throw in here? I couldn't think, you know, something other than the obvious one. Oh, like... I, I appreciate you very much. All right, well, good. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, having us all three here is great. Uh, we had a great show last week, though. Although we seem to open a bunch of. Uh, uh, cans of worms when it comes to anime stuff. We'll get all of that in a second. Um, but I wanted to give a quick shout out to somebody in our in our community named Tendo Pain. All right, I'm not I, I'm not gonna say why. He knows why. I just want to throw it out there. Thank you, Tendo Pain. Also, I wondered if John had any thoughts on my quote unquote weebification that I've supposedly <laughs> <Yeah>. experienced. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Since I was here last, now I I will let me give you a couple of things that will maybe give you more of a reaction. And then we're also going to hear about your move. Okay. Yeah. But, let's let's hear it. But part of what I wanted to lay in here was uh, I'm also in the middle of watching a couple of anime series. <laughs> Oh man, you fell so deep. <laughs> I'm watching, ahead, but it's real mainstream stuff. It's real mainstream. So I'm watching like. Um, Scott, uh, it always starts with real mainstream <laughs> stuff. Let me, let me ask you a question, John. <laughs> like, or Scott. Like that's you, how it starts, man. Yeah, you ever, nobody ever he, goes, hey, I decided to pick up anime. Here's 10 obscure titles that I you, nobody's ever heard of that I'm getting into. Yeah. Scott, you, do you, this is how you, it begins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a body pillow yet? <laughs> No, no, I don't have a body. Okay. I almost choked on that. You're I, fine. Then you're fine. I don't have a body pillow, nor do I have any plans but for a then, body then pillow. Then you're fine. You're fine. Don't worry. Just okay. Don't worry about it. All right. So that, is that the line where people they they go? I, it's, so, it's a line. It's one of a few. Okay. I think it's a concerning line, and it's more the the line of concern is if you're not concerned about it. You know, I again, I don't want to be too judgy. If you got a body pillow with your favorite anime waifu. <laughs> We try to be accepting, but at the same time, like I, you know, you're in a different you've, zone. You've, there's a uh, what is it? You've crossed the Rubicon or something? Yeah, you've like crossed that. Rubicon. There you go. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I think I think you're you're you know. So if you're just because I feel like these things can be guilty pleasures sometimes too. But mm. then I go, I don't have a body pillow, so I'm probably okay. Yeah, that's sort of my. Well, first step is to get a waifu or a husband doe. That like that's step one. I don't think Scott has one of those. Yet. I've never even like, heard of a husband doe. What is that? Oh, yeah, that's the Bando? male equivalent oh. of a wife. Oh, okay. But I know waifu because you guys explained it to me once. So I'd have to have somebody I'd yeah. pick out from, I don't know, my <laughs> playthrough. Sure we did it one time. My <laughs> one time. <laughs> but like my playthrough of Tales of Arise, if I like one of the girly ladies in there, I could she could be a waifu for me, right? Is that the idea? I mean, if you want to wife them, I think. Like if you like, the if you like them or like, oh, they're drawn very attractively, it's one thing. I think if you're like... 
If they were real, I would want thing. them to be my girlfriend. Sure. So I think that's yeah. Well, yeah. Look, it's a subtle thing, Scott. Here's the way it happens. You start watching anime. Yeah. The popular stuff. Sure. The mainstream stuff. Sure. And then you go, you know what? This anime ain't that bad. And then you start watching some more obscure stuff. And that's exciting, too. But then all of a sudden, you're going to be like, man, there was this one character. I just couldn't get over him. They were really cool. I just really liked him. Doesn't matter if it's a boy. Doesn't matter if it's a girl. Doesn't matter if it's part person part cat you're just gonna be like you know that was a cool character i really liked that character and then all of a sudden you're gonna draw a lot of analogies to this anime mm. and you're gonna notice that you're talking about this character more and more mm. i'm not there and yet, then all then. of a sudden you're, you're gonna just and it's not you're not gonna be like oh they're my waifu you're not gonna dive in look it's in, it's insidious it sneaks its way in you're okay. just gonna talk about them a lot and then someone in chat is gonna contact you <laughs> And they're going to go, Scott, do you have a P.O. box? Yeah. And you're going to say yes, and you're going to give them the P.O. box, yeah. and you're going to go down there, and you're going to pull out a big old pillow with that character on it, mm. and this is, this is the moment. You're going to go, I bet that pillow's comfy. Yeah. And then I'm in. And then you're in. Then I'm over and then, and then they have you, and then they have you, and then it's done. Okay. And that's how it happened. Do you think they make a Dante uh, body pillow? Because I've been watching. See, you already you're already thinking about I've it. I've been I've been watching the Devil May Cry anime from a few years ago. Uh, more than that, it's like 07 or something. And uh, I thought that was really good. I gravitate towards a lot of fighting, a lot of sword play, guns, explosions, robots, kaiju type stuff. Anyway, I think that was already a known thing with me. I I like that stuff. I'm into it. What I'm not into, and I still am not into, is. A lot of just sitting around going uh, and talking to each other. I'm not into that. Like, I don't yeah. care about any high school settings. I don't care about any of that crap. What I want is vampires and demons and robots. But and, what if you could have all of that and high school? Well, I don't want that. Yeah. The high school <laughs> part just annoys me. I don't, <laughs> there's a lot of anime like that, too. <laughs> oh, there's. A, I'm sure but there's just, somewhere all yeah, of that but, together. I'm sure but there's think plenty about of examples. This, Scott. Yeah. But, like, like, you're taking your first steps, right? Like, Imagine yeah. your grandchildren, Scott. Gosh, damn you it. show them a movie. Do you think? Do you think when they get a little older and they watch a movie, they're going to want to watch a movie about kids in high school and high school problems, or do you think they're going to want to watch a movie about actions and swinging swords and gunfights and vampires? That's where it starts. Mm. You okay. got to get in on that. All but of it's then a gateway. You're go, hey, you know what? I want to slow it down a little bit. What if they all just stood around and talked to each other a little bit? So this is a sphere with gates. There's gateways on all sides of the sphere. You're saying everything's yeah. a gateway. There's no one way in. There's no two ways in. Well, it's not, it's all no, it's not that no, everything's a gateway. Everybody's origin story is different. But yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, look, we go through this a lot. You like something, but you fight it, right? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm playing, I'm playing like, World of Warcraft, like, it's 1998 or 2001 or something like that. Right? Yeah. I don't want to, but I am. Yeah. And I think... You know, I'm at a point now where a year ago I knew what one K-pop band was. Now I could list <laughs> off 30. I don't want to. I hate it. But it's like, if, why fight it if you just like something? You just like, you know, at a certain point you're like, I'm enjoying this. Why do I want to keep myself from enjoying it? Like, you know, except for maybe what others might perceive me as or feeling like it's a little... I'm but who are you old. trying to impress at this thing? Um, oh, nobody. That's I don't have. I, mean, I have no shits yeah. to give. Gotta, I have no shits yeah. to give. It's just when I first started hearing the word weeb, it sounded like derogatory, and so I started digging around. And people said, "Well, no, it's not so bad. If they call you a weeb, it just means you're sort of half interested in some of this content. And if you were a wee boo or bow, I don't know which one of those two. Uh, Weebo is a yeah. special. That's the that's the name of the Bo fan club is Weebo. Oh, oh, oh I see. Yeah. <laughs> Weebo. Not, not, not yeah, Weebo. You were the, that was your release on the Nintendo Wii in 2006 was Weebo. That's what they called it. But anyway, the mm. point is like I don't I don't have um how do I put this? It's not like it's all consuming or anything, but I've I'm gaining new appreciation for that kind of storytelling. Um I already admired the artistry of animation when it comes to like fighting sequences and like really cool explosion animation and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm still going to skip cut scenes with people going, you know, a little perverted old man talking about his shoes for 10 minutes. Like I don't care about that uh, stuff. Yeah. I just want, let's get to the meat of it. 
And I didn't realize what John's saying is that, well, sure, for now. So here are the mainstream, mainstream things I'm watching. I'm watching Attack on Titan, finally. I like it a lot. It's very good. Um, and what's not to like? There's giant naked dudes attacking a city. And they're taller than the building or the wall they put up for to stop them, except for the one guy who broke in. Like that's just cool. Not the giant naked dudes. What's not to like? Yeah, that's a cool. <laughs> yeah, giant naked Come dudes. On. And some of them because are all I'm partial to giant naked dudes. Some of them are naked. <laughs> some are naked. They don't have any, you know, junk downstairs, but they're all like weirdly smooth and and these big, you know, look like just people wandering around out there that are yeah. huge. But then there's some of them that are like muscles they're on the outside smooth. and like extra teeth. And like weird, you know, they're like mutant versions of it. I don't understand the story yet as to how they're different or why, and I'm sure they get into it. But I'm finally so you've been watching, watching that. Attack on Titan. I have been, yeah. I watched it this week. Doesn't see, bit. doesn't that music make you want to go and like go boxing or something? Like when you, it's very good. Please I tell me you're, you're not skipping. Do you the skip intro. intro? Uh, you I watched the intro. intro the first time, and for uh, subsequent uh, episodes, I skip. And it's like literally like eight minutes into your 30 right. minutes. I skip ahead because yeah. that thing is long and it's arduous. It's too soon for you to leave Dagobah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. How much right, training right. you have. <laughs> young, young, young my, 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 weeb is, my weeb is low. I don't have a lot of metachlorine. You, you we're just, we're showing you where the roadmap is, Scott. There's going to come a time where you don't skip intro. That's like stage two. Sure. You know? yeah. Like yeah, you're, that's you're definitely on the a next sign. level. Yeah. But in yeah. video games, like I had said last week, the, the impetus for all of this was going back to some Fire Emblem, back to some um, Advance Wars games, very anime storylines and characters and stuff in those things. And I love those games. I get so into them and I get really wrapped up in them. And I was also looking forward to uh, Unicorn Overlord, which now has launched. I'll talk about it later. I played a ton of it. I think that game is like legit good, like real good. And so it's honking all my horns. So as a result, like I often do, with other stuff, like when I get in a real Warhammer 40K mood, I do this. When I get in a big mood for MMOs, I go try 50 MMOs, like that weird Japanese or that um, Chinese MMO I played that one time. And John just oh, yeah. looked at me funny the whole time I talked about it. <laughs> I, like that kind of thing, I get in these moods. Sometimes it's mobile. Sometimes it's, hey, Korean MMOs, what are they doing these days? Let's look at 50 of them and see. Like I get in these yeah. moods. This one feels a little bit more uh, long-term because... I'm finally getting past some things. So I'll, I'll, I'll explain this real quick. So, you know, for weeks now I've been talking about, um, or a couple weeks anyway, I've been talking about Tales of, or Tales of Arise, uh, that or Scarlet Nexus. They're both very heavy in the tropes that we're talking about. Just like the stories and the characters are just soaked in these anime tropes that used to just put me off. And now I'm seeing them for the earnest work they're trying to make. And it's those are that's less objectionable for me to to get to work through that part of it or to try to it's easier for me to get behind one of these characters and go, oh, okay, I see his motivation. I understand it. It's a little goofy, cartoony, strange translation. Like there's a lot of things here that probably aren't, you know, wouldn't normally ring a bell for me. But for whatever reason, I I, I understand now. I understand why one young boy born in a village who uh, is meant to be the, the the chosen one is always in these things. It's always that. That's the story every time. And it used to bug me. Now I'm like, you know what? I'm going to accept that for now. I'm going to go ahead and let the chosen one, you know, the Neo of JRPGs happen. Just let it happen. We're going to have our clouds. We're going to have our, who's the uh, um, uh, Chrono dude? Chrono, that's his name. Right? Chrono. <laughs> yeah, Chrono. Um, I'm going to let them be that thing. They wake up in the morning, their mom or their aunt or somebody says, oh, go down to the festival. They all do it. Every one of them does this. New ones, old ones, it doesn't matter. And it used to really put me off. And then <laughs> this time I just went, ah, I'm going to let, let that go. And because I've been letting that go, I've been experiencing some very cool things. This may turn me eventually around to finishing Final Fantasy six, 16. But one of the things I like about these other games I'm mentioning is I think they've got pacing better. So this is a whole other argument we can have on even a different show. But the pacing of games like this new one I'm playing, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, which I picked up this week. Yeah, has you hold I have it. Downs. I haven't played it yet, but I, I have it. Oh, you got it. Okay, I'd be curious what you think. I got it. I just haven't gotten to play it yet. Yeah. Now, here's the part where you might say Scott has jumped off some kind of platform into weeb water. 
Okay. I got a deal on it, so this is part of it. But I finally, well, finally, it wasn't like I was in the market, but I picked up a PlayStation 5 Portal, the little portable device. You know, oh, nice. Sinky nice, thing. Yeah. yeah. And why did I do it? Some people are like, well, wait, why'd you do that? Well, I could make an excuse like, well, I want to try it out for the show. I want to review Kim it. Kim said you had to unplug the <laughs> Xbox from beside your bed. <laughs> and I got my Switch, or I've got my, yeah, I've got my Switch, my Steam Deck, my uh, uh, Series S, and now this, all over there. They're all over there. <laughs> You're going to wake up wrapped on all the consoles one of these days. I know. The it's really weird. I'm going to end up falling out of bed and strangle myself or something but on cables. But anyway, um, so I got this for this. It, it was Part of it is, I will admit, is to be able to talk about it say, well, here's why it's good. Or if you're a PlayStation yeah. ecosystem person, this is why it might suit you or, you know, those kind of things. But if I'm really honest, the biggest reason I picked it up is because I wanted to play Unicorn Overlord and... Uh, which is not on PC at all, and Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, I want to play those in bed because I'm just, I have a lot more game time there. My days are crazy, especially this last week's been insane. And so it was a good excuse for me to be able to play these games where I want to play them and all the rest of my library on the PlayStation 5. I should, you know, I need to, I need to beat Tsushima. I need to beat freaking uh, Forbidden West. Like these, there's these games piling up, and now I have less of an excuse as I can take it on the road. Plus, I also want to see if that thing was, you know, worthy of the praise I had read about it, which was its job. It's one job that that thing has to do. Everyone says it does really well. Like its job is to remote play for your PlayStation Five on a nice big screen with all the controller support that you have with a regular PS Five controller, plus no latency of any noticeable amount. Really good visuals, blah blah blah. Simple to use, and I wanted that. I wanted to prove that out. And the good news is, it is absolutely really good at doing that. It's the least amount of latency I've ever had with any kind of cloud gaming, even like local network gaming. It's faster than Steam Link. It's faster than uh, Xbox in the house uh, type streaming, um, and it's also faster than even just doing PlayStation Remote on either my phone with a backbone or on a Steam. Uh, Steam Deck is slower. I get le- I get more latency trying to do the PlayStation remote thing on all of that stuff than I do on this portal device. So whatever magic they got going there to reduce latency, I don't know what it is, but it works as advertised. There were multiple times where I felt like I was, I would look at battery life and go, well, how come I have so much battery life? If I've been playing for like five hours, what's going on? And I realized, oh, this isn't the console. This is just mirroring the console. The console's downstairs purring away it's it's that good at sort of tricking you into just you're just playing your games you don't you don't have to think about it which for me has been a big wall for a long time and this sort of stuff so anyway i'd like to say those are the reasons i got it Uh but the real reason is so i could take some of these things to bed with me so where i've got a lot more game time can stay up all night and they just happen to be at the moment anime heavy japanese Exports, sure. localization. Well, we won't make any jokes about how you know having the waifu in bed with you is <laughs> one yeah. step away from body pillow, basically. He, or anything. he doesn't mm-hmm. need a body pillow. He's got the whole console. Yeah. Well, what if I need no. a body pillow to help my neck from all the strain I'm giving playing stupid well, portable games? Well, that sounds like a wonderful excuse when someone sends it to you. Oh, my Lord. Look, I don't want the body pillow. I just need it to support my neck. Yeah, I just need to feel better. Games all the time. I had a body pillow in the late 90s because I had a back thing that I threw out. And I, in fact, people sending it to you is a great excuse because then you can be like, "Well, they just send it to me." Mm-hmm. Yeah, what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna. What am I gonna do? Throw it? out a good pillow? Yeah, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I realize it looks yeah. like Dante She's from. Not gonna uh... like the body pillow. I don't <laughs> oh, and that was the oh, other like anime. Dante? Dante from Devil May Cry. So okay, so Dante's that's fine. So that's the other thing I forgot to tell you, or I haven't said yet. The other mainstream, it's not even mainstream, but it's that old Devil May Cry anime from '07, and I, it's bloody and gory and awesome, and I like it. So I'm watching that, and also they had a sale right before the spring sale where all the Devil May Cries were, like, slashed big time. I don't know what all this is, just prepping for Capcom stuff for Dragon's Dogma 2, I don't know. But it was down to, like, nine bucks, and I'm like, well, I've heard great things about that. It was also the last, oh, I don't think I'm supposed to say that. Never mind, I can't tell you that part. I know a thing about it. (laughs) About a thing how it got made. Anyway. Uh, and I just realized okay. I told oh, somebody. Oh man, look at that! Just anyway, nearly stepped on a landmine. Almost walked over that landmine. Walked mine. around it. 
I scooched. Deftly. I, 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 uh, Deftly. I, I dune walked, so I didn't disturb the worm. Anyway, that's the other thing I obsessed about. And there's no anime in that sh- that movie. I freaking love that thing. That's all I've been able to think about. So I've been obsessed with Dune for t- two weeks. Obsessed with these freaking anime games for two weeks. I don't know how close that puts me to the body, body pillow, but I'm I'm here to I'm here to tell Can you. Can I that. make We're an just... ignorant statement that people are either going to rally against me for saying, or they're going to go, you know what, John knows what he's talking about when he, even when he clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. Let's hear it. I know nothing about Dune. Haven't read the book. Haven't <laughs> seen any of the movies. Nothing. Yeah. But from just what I've absorbed via osmosis, Dune is very anime. <laughs> um sure it's yeah i mean uh, uh-huh. um it depends on how you define anime i don't know if you'd get that from reading the book because i've read the book it, you definitely you know but i mean anime is about about big drama man it's about you know the meaning of, of, of life like living your life to the fullest what does death mean and sacrifice like anime goes pretty hard for all the like jokes we're making about like weeb and like in terms of cartoons, like they can be pretty serious in a way. Hanna Barbera n- could only dream about getting, yeah, that's or true. you know, like yeah. any of the North American like cartoons are for kids, and kids want to, kids want robots that change into vehicles, and that's it. No <laughs> sex, no gambling, no nothing. You that's know, it. But you'll have all these vices and adult themes. And some very excellent dramas in the animation world of Japan. I mean, that's why you can watch them as an adult. Yeah, that's why they win over there. They they yeah. win their awards. They they are the the big deals. So I'm not. I love that in the chat room within three comments we got John is a hundred percent correct and not at all. <laughs> so so there we where go. where Nailed you're it. correct is one of some of the stuff I talked about earlier. The sort of young, uh, destined to be the chosen one whole story. I mean, it's straight out of this. Now you could also say that a lot of stories are derivative of Dune. Dune kind of Dune in a lot of ways established some of those stories, but it's also a story that is old as time. Young, un, unready person is suddenly made ready and has to lead everyone. Kind of idea, like that's. That's a pretty old concept, yeah. story wise, and there are a ton of those stories in anime adventure stories. That being said, and I said this this morning, Kim can confirm. I said I turned to her and I said, "You know, it would make a really cool anime, like a full series, like a Dune adaptation. It doesn't even have to be straight from like do it from like Dune em- or um, God Emperor Dune, which is set like a thousand years in the future or something. Uh, it's a weird one, that book, and." it probably actually benefit from being like a hand drawn, you know, thing. I I don't know, but it's I think I don't think you're 100% wrong, but I also don't think it's it doesn't adhere to all the tropes that usually you think of when you think of anime. And by that oh, I mean, I mean you I'm know, not saying it's one to one, but I'm saying you've got your young protagonist, everybody looks like they got a stylized little outfit thing going on. Uh, there's like a big looming cool thing that isn't really the primary focus, but it's in the background in the, you know, in the sandworms, you got a really interesting setting. You got a lot of intrigue. These are all the things I've just sort of picked up. And those are all things mm. that are very prevalent in anime. Here's what you need to do. It's I got need mechas too. Kind of like, <laughs> well, oh, does it have mechas? Holy shit. Oh, I didn't yeah. even know how, how on the mark I was. Yeah. It's Look got a that. lot of that stuff. And it's also Villeneuve's, these current movies are very, uh, it's all about scale and you know how an anime a good anime can be really produce scale like wow that robot we get a fight is so freaking big it's you get a lot of that in this so i don't think these are unfair comparisons i do know this you need to see these two dune movies if nothing else if you don't read the books if you don't ever see david lynch's thing it's all fine forget about all that you need to see dune part one and two john I know there's a lot of desert there. I know, I know, I know. I, I know you're not thing. a fan no, of the deserts, but man, Dune lives awesome. Yeah, like, and the first one was good. I've seen the second one, but I know it, I can't wait. I've been trying to go. Actually, they are the. I'm telling you, together, closest comparison I can have is like when your three Lord of the Rings movies are done, and now you have that one big cohesive thing, or when you take Infinity War and Endgame, and now you have that cohesive thing that made it so great. That is what's happening with these two parts. One was amazing on its own. Two is really, really good on its own. You put those two things together, you may have my favorite six hours of continuous footage of anything in my life. That's how much I like it. 
It's so good. Pretty good. That's so I good. will watch it. Like it's not. I'm not really trying to avoid it. I just haven't sought it out. And either. you've been busy. This isn't the time of year. Or th- I have this been bat- a little busy. Yeah, you've been moving all week. Speaking of which, all right, we're parking Scott's Weeb Mobile to the side. We now move. <laughs> we'll get back to it in games we play. That's sure. right. We'll get back over to here real quick because John apparently has a story that I must hear. He teased it before. Now I now we have to hear it. So what well, happened? yeah, I mentioned that there were two interesting things that uh, came out of the move. The first thing was a interesting factoid um, that I learned about my furniture. <laughs> Usually you don't learn something interesting about your furniture when you move, but uh, I did. One thing I found out is my dining room table, table where I not but few hours ago ate Chick-fil-A at, um, <laughs> It's the same table that was owned by the guy who discovered Pluto. I'm sorry, the planetoid known currently as Pluto. Yeah, the form the the former planet. Wait, the, no, it's back to planet the, again, right? So for a while is it, it was a planet again. Well, for a while it was planet. Then they were like, eh, it's more of a planetoid, and everyone got mad. And then now it's plan. Now I think it has planet status again. I don't actually know this. I think I heard something though. Regardless, the guy who found it. I have his table. It's mine now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now so, it's not really a table, more of a table toyed now, now that we think about it. Just kidding. That's a terrible yeah. joke. Continue so uh, there you go. That's the uh, that's that's something interesting I learned, is that uh, I dine at the table of the man who discovered Pluto. Um, so let, let just, you know, enjoy that fact. And here's the real meat and potatoes, though. Oh, uh, I'm scared. Moving is usually a stressful thing. Yeah. And uh, I thought I had experienced the full scope of the stress. <laughs> and then I discovered that sometimes people can make it harder um, because my next door neighbor, former next door neighbor, thank goodness, uh, he got very mad that we scheduled a bulk trash pickup. You know, we, we were calling, we were figuring out, let's, you know, get garbage bins sent to our, our new house. And they said, oh, well, if you're moving, you know, you might have a lot of extra stuff. Do you want to do a bulk trash pickup? And we said, oh, yeah, that'd be great. And they said, okay, well, here's what you got to do. It's got to be within these dimensions. You put it on the street. It can't be within this amount of space of a fire hydrant. It's got to be, they told us exactly where to put it. And they said, just put the stuff there. You can put it out a week. I, th- I believe it was a week early, but we wanted to be good neighbors. So we said, well, we'll wait till, you know, a, a day before and uh, we'll put it out. And so while my uh, wife and mother-in-law were taking some stuff out, it was some old tables and stuff like that. Um, my next door neighbor came out, did not want to have a discussion and just started throwing the tables at my wife and mother-in-law. Oh my gosh, dude. I'm sorry. This and table was it the Pluto yelling, table? Not in my yard. Not in my yard. Was it a pl- was it the Pluto it table? The the discovered Pluto? It was not the Pluto. No, we didn't, we didn't trash the Pluto <laughs> oh. table. Scott, <laughs> the Pluto table's fine. <laughs> we kept the Pluto table. Um. Oh wait. Yeah, so this is I, one of those big bins they park out in front of your thing, and then it you've... wasn't a bin that you can just put it as long as it's within it. It, ha- it can only it can't be longer than uh, six feet long. Uh, It can be four feet tall and four feet deep, and you just put it on the side of the road, and then they come by with a, it looks like a trash truck with a crane on it, and they just pick it up, drop it in, and smush it down. Um, And he didn't want to, he didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to talk about it, and uh, just started hucking tables. Was he always a poop um, before this? Like, always running, having run-ins? We never talked to him. Like, I tried waving to him once, he just ignored me. And, like, we barely ever saw him. I think he just lives in his house. Yeah. And he just looks out the window and makes judgments upon the things he sees. So, uh, we didn't really know what to do. We aren't fully moved out. We still have to go over there. So, we don't want to do anything that's going to, like, get us in too much trouble. But mm. my current favorite idea is my wife wants to send him a mug. <laughs> and the coffee mug just says... Good morning on the front with a middle finger on the bottom. Uh, and she said, I want to give him something 
that is so that it fits his personality, which is clearly a guy that sits in his room and drinks coffee and judges people all day, yeah. that he'll like with a little note encouraging him to be a better neighbor to the next person who moves it. I was yeah. like, I think that sounds great. I yeah. think that we should get him a coffee mug. That's a great way so, to do it. What's what's the worst thing can happen? You can sh- I throw it at your mom. Body pillow. He needs a body pillow. Yeah. He needs to, body he pillow needs to, is not a pretty good idea. Who do we put on the body pillow? Up to, Yoko Lit- Yoko Littner who who, who Yoko Littner like Yoko Yoko Who's that? from Gurren Lagann. Oh, someone told me today to watch that in our it's Discord. Good. Is it because it's satirical of the Mecca? Yeah, if you like sa- over the top satire, I like satire. It's uh, good. Yeah, I prefer. It's not I, like overtly satire, but it basically it's just weird and basically puts it on his head. Not that we need to get into there, but she's one that you could send to your neighbor. She's great. Do it. She's Do nice. it, John. Body pillow. Body pillow is pretty good. Choose body his waifu. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I, I mean, the fact right. that you threw it at your mom, that almost feels like like assault. Like you can mother in law or mother in law. Yeah, we did. We did think about it. Like, but it was just you know you're about to be moving. We're about to not have to deal with him ever again, and yeah. it felt like a escalation at a time where. A lot of our stuff is going to be getting brought out. Uh, a lot of, you know, you just never know. Like, people are so crazy these days. I mean, l- case in point, he came out chucking tables instead of going like, hey, can we talk about this? Yeah. Like, that's that's just not a guy that I want to further antagonize when he has a moment to be around. Although, he is a bit of a coward. The second I was out there, he was back in his house. And then I thought he was going to have a, a big fit when the movers showed up because they parked in front of his house um, and he wouldn't come out. I did warn the movers. I was like, hey, guys, if you want to park over here, there's a chance this neighbor might be a little crazy. And the movers looked at me and they said, what's he going to do? <laughs> I said, yeah, hey, if movers, that's the, yeah, attitude, the, if that's that's the saying, attitude movers, you want to have, I'm all for it. I 100% yeah. support you, it. You, you I just didn't table. think you guys deserved it. Yeah. So, uh, you, you check you a know. table, those mo- movers will check a fr- freezer at you. Yeah. You know, They'll uh, check all yeah. 18 uh, wheels. Look, of that I thing. wouldn't have wanted to mess with the movers, but I, I greatly appreciated it. That makes me want to kick that we guy. We already in the nuts. know our neighbors in the new house. They're awesome. They've already, Good. you know, if you need anything to help, and we've got phone numbers exchange so we're in a much better spot than a guy that wouldn't even wave back if you waved at him yeah and then he's a table chucker when uh when there's something he doesn't like yeah whatever i mean plus so here's the other reason i think it's probably okay that you guys are sort of turning the other cheek he's you've still got what another week of back and forth just to get stuff moved out and done and dusted and all that you don't want to have like certain that guy can't be served a warrant and then spend the next five days wondering if he's going to camp out with laxed arizona gun laws and pop you guys while you're walking around or something like that <laughs> yeah nobody wants that so or even just try and follow us to our house or you know like our new house or whatever like it's just not it's just not worth it it's yeah. just not it's not it's, something you want to invite that so. sucks though it makes me mad for you um but you know. I, i've never seen my wife so mad she smashed one of the tables he threw she was like putting it back down. She slammed it down, smashed it in half. I was like, goodness, I've never seen this side of you. Very hulky, um, hulkish. Hulk, or I know, I had to be the voice of reason, and I am so rarely that. Uh, I enjoy not having to be the voice of reason, but I had to be like, hey, calm down. Let's all let's all just chat, and let's let's figure it out. She's flipping him off through the window. I'm like, let's let's all just de-escalate a little bit. She's like Kim would. I would. This is us. I Kim would have been so fried. This would have made her so angry, and I would have been. All right, now let's all. I would have. That would have. I would have totally done <laughs> that. That, that so, was me. Yeah. yeah, it was me. And that is not the role I usually have. Yeah. Uh, in these situations, my role is usually reversed. You're but... a peacemaker this week, John. That's what you are. Yeah. Nicely done. I, the... I told people to calm down. Like, put a medal on me. Wow, what a hero. Yep. You're John Cena, the peacemaker. That's how this all went down. That's how I'm going to picture it. Well, all right. Thank so you that for was that my, story. That was my move. And, uh, you know, other than that, it was all the all the fun of moving that you can possibly have. Yeah, which, of course, is the funnest thing you can do as a modern human is move. Yeah. You want to hear me and Bo complain about that a bit more? We did some fun pre-show tonight. So uh, check out that, <laughs> patrons. 
All right. Uh, I think that's it for that. Let's get to what we played this week. We got games. Um, so I'll explain a couple more of these things with the portal. I got the portal, and again, I mostly got it for these games. But uh, I can tell you right now, at the end of this year, I will probably put this game on my list of best games of the year. Um, it's a lot of stuff would have to beat it. It may not be number one. I don't know. Dragon's Dogma is looking so good that that may be everybody's. I don't know. But um, Unicorn Overlord is so freaking good for what it is that I cannot recommend it enough. So if you are out there and you are even like lightly a fan of strategy RPGs, and that includes things like Final Fantasy Tactics or... Um, War Tales, you're saying if you like War Tales, I should be playing this? I think War Tales is... Yes, there's some similar vibes yeah. to War Tales. War Tales is a much more westernized take on the idea um, and also a lot more focused on low fantasy stuff, whereas this is, you know, this is still very high fantasy. Um, it's the closer, the, the closest thing I could compare, compare it to would be like, um, Fire Emblem. If Fire Emblem also had some real time aspects to it, the real time aspects are mostly movement and placement in your battlefield kind of stuff. Once you actually fight though, it's a very turn-based affair. In fact, some of it is kind of auto battler but only as much as you want it to be or as much as or as little as you want it to be. Tactics Ogre is another good one. I almost said Org. John would have laughed at me. Um, <laughs> oh, man. That would have been a org. callback. But the fighting... The, org. So this is Vanillaware, already kind of known for some pretty cool epic stuff, uh, especially their art style. As you can see right here, and they've sped this way up. Whoever's playing it's put their stuff on turbo, but... Because you can speed the fights up, but the uh, mm. the actual fighting, the the hand to hand stuff where where your strategies kick in, is so fun to watch. It sounds amazing, um, just some incredible sound work, and just really satisfying feeling of like I did that strategy right and I prepared that unit correctly. And units are not just one character. So like in a uh, Fire Emblem, your unit is dude on a horse. Uh, in this one, there's a guy on a horse. His name is Clive, by the way. I didn't name him that. He just is Clive. Oh, look at that. Another Clive. Yeah, I thought of you. Um, all, all over the place. <laughs> and with Clive, oh, these though. Are the, these are the Odin Sphere people. Yes, this is the Odin Sphere people. This is them. This oh, is Vanillaware. Explains they make... why I found the art so appealing anytime yeah, I Yeah, very, very similar uh, style. Um, I will say also the voice work, insanely good. Um way step ahead of what I usually would think of as a good translation or as a good localization. It's very, very good VO. Um, and the units are more than just Clive, the guy on the horse. It's Clive, the guy on the horse. Plus he might, you might put a healer in his back line. Uh, his unit's kind of like a little grid that you can set up. So he's in the front and then I'll put a healer back here and like an arrow guy over here or a thief. You'd love thieves in this, in this John, because thief characters and units are great frontline characters. And I thought, well, that seems weird and opposite of what I would normally think. But the reason it is, they have incredible evasion. So they evade so many of the big broody attacks. Uh, so they got their rogues from uh, WoW Season of Discovery, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard somebody Excellent. else bring that up, actually. Ro ro rogue tanks are a thing in that game. <laughs> yeah. Because of their evasion. <laughs> there's definitely some of that. Um, but these guys, they evade a lot of hits. They're also very cool about sneaky stuff they also get like advantages on who starts first stuff like that like initiative and um and then when you're not fighting the overworld is kind of a place to go upgrade your stuff and run some uh, quests different kind of quests for deliveries or something or build up a town so it has more places for you to spawn um you you spawn new units based on valor points that you earn for winning uh level characters level up individually you gear them individually uh, their story is told individually, and it's a it's a pretty good if if maybe a little standard sort of one of these stories. But like I said, the the voice acting and the look of everything is so good that it's just really it's really compelling. Um, I'm probably ten hours in or something like that. And you're playing on PS5. PS5, yeah. This, so this is only available at PlayStation Five and um, uh, Switch currently. Oh no, Xbox as well. That makes Sorry. me so sad. Yeah, no PC Bumped yet. Me out, man. Oh, yeah. And Vanillaware says and that's why you don't see a lot of Vanillaware games on PC. They have this whole translated interview where they said we just don't like P 
people messing with or modding our games or like tweaking them or, or you know, that's they don't like that about PC games. They didn't rule out that they wouldn't get a PC version out well, at some point. Good. But. I don't want to play your game anyway. Yeah, then, take that, right? jerks. Take that. Yeah. You They've been around for a while, though. They do a lot of stuff with, with Rare. Or not Rare. Sorry, Square. That's what I meant to say. Rhymes with Rare. Um, I couldn't name the game, but a bunch of stuff prior to this. Um, and they're, you know, they're like kind of top of their game with this kind of game. I really wish it was on PC. I would, uh, you know, my goal was to get it yeah, somewhere. Usually, usually picked a bad time to get sued by Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. Do you hear about the new name of the one that took the open source and ran with it? They're called Sue You. S U Y U. That's a that's a real thing. Apparently, they're actually doing that. Uh, um, but anyway, uh, it is very good. So I, I guess I would reach out to anyone who likes tactical games, who likes tactical RPGs, and really likes things like Fire Emblem. Is just a really maybe the best example, but like Tactics Ogre and stuff like that. It's just a very very cool one of these, and the reviews are speaking for themselves. It's getting nines and tens everywhere. Uh, whoever's reviewed it. I have no doubt this would do great on PC, and I hope they change their mind and put it out there. But big, fat thumbs up for I that. I can't stop thinking about this. We don't like people messing with our games. Yeah, it's a like, weird... It's, I, I wish I, I could find the quote. Uh, well, you're... You know what? It's so countered at what I view gaming is. Like, I'm not saying it's a invalid way to feel about, you know, games are a form of art. I... I get why someone who painted a picture was like, well, I'd rather you didn't paint over the top of it, right? Yeah. But it's just the gaming medium has been so like, you know, yeah, we put it out there and you take it for what it is. And if people mod it, people mod it. It's just so weird to hear it. Like, yeah. again, I, I'm not really trying to paint them as bad guys with this, but it, it breaks my brain a little. I'm just like, well, who are you? Get out, get out of here. Mm. Like, yeah, like go, if you buy, go if you write buy a, a book if you don't want anybody if, to mess with your art. Go if you buy the Monopoly else. board game and want to put your own pieces in there rather than use the ones that come with it, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's, yeah, like it's fine. Who cares? It's your board game, like, do whatever you take shit on the Monopoly board for all you, you know, it's, it's your board game. So, yeah. like, it's sort of the same with video games. It's like, look, if you want to cheapify your experience, put a trainer on it. What's the big deal? Like, you know, so. I don't know why it matters to them either. Maybe there's some purity to the experience thing, like you guys are sort of saying. It's like, I don't know. They may have. I can't find the quote. There was a quote. Oh, here it is. Altus explains. Um, says, Villanoware is not a fan of PC gaming. Here's the, here's the thing. Uh, ba ba ba. <sighs> Um, basically, yeah, oh, Bo's, I agree with I'm already. I stopped myself. I, I was, you barely got two words out, and I was already like chirping over here. It says, I mean, even, even the interviewer says, it sounds like you guys don't like money because why wouldn't you want more uh, exposure to the game? Um, and they said, if I could find it, ah, crap. I can't find the quote, but they basically are just like, we don't like that scene where people can just hack around with it and dink with it. And I think that's, I think that's probably overall kind of a bad take. I, I think they should. Yeah. I mean, but it's like they can, <laughs> like it, like the fact that it's. I know it minimizes it, but like it's technically possible. Like, oh, they still can. Yeah, they're on they Xbox. They're can. on PlayStation. Yeah, like, like it's. So just, I don't know. What, it's weird. It's weird. I don't yeah. know. I don't. I don't get it. I'm trying so, not to be too harsh about it, but I 100 percent agree with Bo growling like a dog that sees a hand reaching for its <laughs> bone the second he hears it. <laughs> yeah, you're not. You're. I agree with you. I really wanted it there, um, but I don't know. Like now that I'm playing it, I'm kind of like just happy to be playing it. It's very, very good. It does. It looks so. I, I am. The name is very compelling, but I looked at it briefly and I was like, oh, I don't know, but like. I've been watching footage while you've been talking about it. It actually looks pretty sick. Yeah, like, the animation's yeah. insane. It's so cool. It, not even the animation, but I guess it's got, like, I'm curious about some of the characters. Like, there's a rogue character that's, like, really, it's well animated, but I'm mm -hmm. like, what's that person's story? Like, it seems like, yeah, you know, all the characters have some sort of meaning to you. They're not just uh, units, you know? Yeah. Let's see if I can find so, a little audio from this. Maybe it'll help. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It's definitely like compelling to Dispatch me. Dispatch the Vanguard to the cathedral, and remember, we're to apprehend the target alive. It's just, it's just really tightly presented, and and sounds just good. And I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. 
And it's a freaking Sega joint. Sega loves PC ports. You know what, Sega? You go to your next meeting. Altus will be there, and so will uh, these chuckleheads at VanillaWare. And you just put you down Atlas? the... Atlas. I say Altus. I meant Atlas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do that all the time with them and and Altus, which is a whole oh, other Sega's thing. Sega's a publisher on this? Yeah, Sega's a publisher. They should just go, look, half our shit is on PC. More than... Almost 100% of our stuff's on PC. Get to, get your shit together and put it there in six months or less. This does a lot too. I think this is absolutely a vanillaware hangup, big like, time. I mean, because Al- because Atlas put. I mean, all those all those Persona games, they're flooding on PC, and people are loving you know, them there. The Disguises are on there. I'm pretty sure that's them too. Right? Yeah, it is it's them, like right? somebody just needs to talk to the people of vanillaware and be like, I know you don't like people messing with games, but have you been on a yacht? <laughs> like, a, like, a, like a really big one. Yeah, because. You might you might stop caring who's modding your games when you see the yacht. Yeah, game. when you have that yacht and it's within your grasp, and when you have yacht yeah. grasp, you're you're ready, you're ready to roll. I was trying to find some actually I know fighting. You sounds. don't like the idea of people modding video games, but have you considered who gives a shit? <laughs> have you considered <laughs> who gives a shit? <laughs> uh, or or maybe not a yacht. Maybe you'd like, you know. Cocaine. Yeah, maybe you like cocaine. <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> you partial the cocaine. <laughs> oh man, you guys missed out on a great discussion pre-show. Cocaine. Um, I was trying to find cocaine. some combat because the combat's just so meaty. Here's some. I love the sound of this. It's just horse, horse clomping and stabbing. Oh, it just sounds. Uh, good. It, it does look sick. Like I'm a little. I was even like, well, I just got a PlayStation Five, and I was just complaining how uh, I was making Sony lose money. And was, <laughs> maybe, maybe I buy this game, but <laughs> now I'm like, yeah, yeah, maybe you do maybe still. Not. We'll see. Well, I think maybe I good. want a mod that makes it run a little better. Uh, you know, because uh, Final Fantasy VII is certainly. They're certainly stretching the uh, limits on quality with that game. Let me tell you. Oh, in the uh, quality mode or the performance uh, you, mode, you get <laughs> you get quality mode, which runs like a slideshow, or you get performance mode, which looks like smoothly animating puke. So you know, <laughs> think of it. Oh, wow. I mean, I so I went and looked at the demo. I downloaded <laughs> or I the could demo. Play on PC, and it would be awesome. <laughs> I downloaded the demo, and and you, your slideshow is is a consistent thirty, but you don't like the, you don't like a consistent thirty, do you? It, well, it's jarring because I play everything at one twenty minimum. Like yeah. I haven't played a game at a low frame rate in a couple of years now. So I was like, whoa. Yeah, if you're not used whoa. to it, I think it probably throw yeah. you. Because I think thirty is playable, but if you're used to two forty, one twenty, one forty four, like you're probably gonna. Yeah, it's I'm gonna spoiled. feel. I'm a spoiled brat. I know. I know. It's but, gonna feel know. bad. I get it. Yeah. Anyway, cannot say enough thumbs up about this game though. The game itself, <laughs> top notch, rad, awesome. Uh, then I buckled and bought a thing because everybody was saying, Scott, if you like these JRPGs that are like real time and action and everything, you really should play uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. And I went, mm-hmm. Oh, should I? It turns out I should. That game is really cool. <laughs> It's really good. The pacing's amazing. The anime tropes are everywhere, but like I said, I'm friendlying up to the stuff to the point that I'm okay with it. Um, there's a little irritating talking dragon that's basically Orko from, uh, you know, uh, He-Man. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. Great anime example, too, Scott. <laughs> that famous anime <laughs> character, Orko. Okay, bad example. There's plenty of them, though. There's like a little pink... It's full of anime tropes. These awful anime tropes like Orko. Not like that. Okay, so like you, there's a, tons of animes where there's always like a little blue ball that follows everyone and around. And snarf. That talks like, hey, you guys, I think we should go in there. Like that kind of thing. It's like that. Yeah. It's one of those. Okay. Very, I'm lots- just saying, like, you know, let's be fair. It's not just in anime. No, it's everywhere, and it's a problem everywhere. I don't like it anywhere. And sh- and this this character, this dragon, is really annoying. Um, but this is a really well voiced. Another really great example of great voice acting, uh, for the most part, except the dragon. Um, and uh, the some of the set pieces, the action set pieces in this, rival anything I saw in Final Fantasy sixteen up to where I got. Like it's really they got big fights and crazy stuff, and it's a very similar combat system they use some cooldown of uh stuff for abilities um you get to be very specific about what abilities you want and when you want them uh weapon upgrades like all that stuff side quests there's some kind of end game questing thing that i have not gotten to because obviously i'm just playing the story right now but you're you're uh 
you're an air pirate, uh, Skies Ooh. of Arcadia style air pirate. And you uh, had me at you're an air pirate. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're not <laughs> air pirates. You're just heroes that fly around and you know an airship. Don't walk no, it no, back. No. You had yeah, me. Yeah. You had me. You're good. All right. you're good. Air pirates. <laughs> like pitch. I'm making yeah. you a delicious feast. Oh, really? I'm in. Well, it's okay. Yeah. Stop. I did, I just, you had me. I had you. I already you sold you. In. Yeah. You're walking out of the store with the merchandise. I don't know why I had to, to change it, but. You can be a girl. You can be a dude. It's the main character of the story. Sick. You're the captain. Uh, that's nice, right? Um, trying to find some some nice graphics here. the The engine's beautiful. the 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 countryside, the sort of just zones and stuff, are freaking epic. Um, it's a real cut above stuff. I I don't I don't know what I expected, but I'm I'm really impressed. Just sort of the scale of everything. And the way everything moves and the art style, there's there's like a weird pencil quality to some of the character art, but then it's also very, very 3D and very effects, you know, there's a lot of effects stuff going on. This Katrina lady you're looking at right now is a pretty awesome character. There's that stupid freaking dragon. <laughs> is she awesome? Would she be cool on a pillow? She would be cool on a pillow. She might work out on a pillow if I ever got to that point. <laughs> um, but you can unlock a ton of other characters. All these characters are playable, by the way. So you play in a group fight situation but if you're like you know what i don't want to be the main sword dude i would like to be mr ranged weapon guy over there you can you just put him in charge of the group and it doesn't change anything doesn't hurt the story they've all got their own individual stories um oh there's so much more there i'm not even remembering there's a lot here to do and i played a crap shit ton of this thing both on screen and then up there and now this is on pc I didn't get it there because it is not Steam Deck compatible at all. There's some issue that may change later, but I was like, I want to play this now. So I got it on my PS5, playing it on that portal. Um, it's good. It's real good. In I fact, bought it, but I haven't played it yet. I think so. you'll really like it, John. Like, I think I will like it too. This my looks my like whole that my, I would enjoy. Uh, wait a second. Sorry, this is Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, right? Yeah, Relink. Yep. Not their not their free to this, no. Yeah, it does co-op. Co it does do, it does do co-op. I haven't messed with that at all, but it does cl a cross platform co-op. In fact, it does like uh, PC. So you to, play through the story like with the people join your game like Baldur's Gate three or like, I don't know. Like, I think it's MMO light? I think it's MMOE, but you in that you the main story you don't do co-op with people but the all the side quests and the and the end game thing is very co-op but i don't I, I haven't tried it so i can't tell you exactly i don't know exactly how it works. i just i wonder what it's like you know i'm mean, always looking for multiplayer games to play together like a game like this with super cool graphics and anime and you know it's just it's yeah like, it and appeal, all the, you know i like multiplayer games yeah, so yeah no i get you and all the all the land masses, this town she's running around in right now, the the places you visit, the places you do quests, all the you know big set pieces and everything. These are big floating, you know, um, uh, what's the uh, World of Warcraft zone with all the floating earth chunks? Nagrand. Uh, Nagrand. These are all like Nagrand esque things. You're a sky captain, and and these are sky lands. And, oh, it's that fantasy trope where everything's a floating island. And yeah, it's different world islands. Correct. Uh, there the, was a Tracy Hickman and Margaret Weiss book, a series of books that did that in the nineties. Yeah, it's very. It I, but I, yeah, it's it's a it's a trope. It's the sky adventures. That's why you said sky pirates, right? Yeah, very much so. And and Airships I like and, this trope. Yeah, I'm it's a big like, fan. Uh, it's just like boats, which I'm also a big fan of, without the sea, which I'm afraid of. Yep, yep. And I've already gotten so, into some uh, snowy areas, and I thought, well, John will like this. It'll be cool with oh, this. Oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Um, Anime. So four-player co-op. Snow. Four co yeah, there's four color. Uh, yeah, the problem is that the four. stuff. I just don't understand the four-player part, but we could figure that out if you guys uh, ended up getting yeah. it. But if you, It if seems you like you something like that you mm -hmm. can't pick up and play four-player co-op, but it seems like it's something that is capable somewhere in the game. Yeah, the game's end game, and maybe there's more. Maybe you can play it before getting finished with the story. Well, I know you can because I went and did some solo, but that stuff seems like you could play any time with people. But that may be more like hop in, hop out kind of stuff just to earn, you know, the currencies and new weapons and all that crap. Okay. Um, it is uh, it is just a really nice tight package. The reviews are kind of off the charts, which I w was interesting. And I, I think they I think it's deserved. Um, yeah, it's real good. It's very good. Highly recommend this one. So far, I'm having a blast. And I'm about th that long into this one, about 10 hours or something. They have a demo if you want to try it, see if it's even your jam or not. Um, 
but I was um, having, you know, I was getting like um, Secret of Mana vibes out of the combat a little bit because uh, it's real time and some other game I couldn't think of. Oh, well, definitely Final Fantasy 16 sort of boss battle vibes. Um, and story wise, it just is a lighter fare. Everyone really likes each other on this team. So there's a lot of really, in- you're very encouraging of each other. <laughs> So it's a lot of like, you did great. You're the you're the bright star in our team. Uh, or if, if someone screws up, oh, Captain, I'm so sorry. I, the team is all that matters to me. It's like a very tight-knit kind of story. There's not a lot of brooding people who are mad about being there and stuff. Just good versus evil yeah, stuff. Like star Trek The Next Generation effect. Kind of, yeah. Keep going. We're all working together. A little bit. Uh, it's good, though. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, PC and PS5 currently not available on xbox so sorry xbox that one is not for you yet um all right then a game that i've been dying to talk to you guys about total gear shift here this is a little a little indie uh that grabbed me so hard (laughs) that i've not been able to let go for very long it is this game called boar blasters and it is this great little indie pixel thing that Scratches two very specific itches I have. I have always been a sucker for anything where I get to mine and go down further. And it's anything from simple puzzle games like Mr. Driller. Remember those those games? Yeah. Um, or something Dig like... Dig Dug? You like Dig Dug? Love Dig Dug. Like Dig Dug's probably the proto example, right? Like the original, the yeah. OG. Yeah, there was something so. about that. There's something about just destroying ground and moving deeper. And the, the Dig... Uh, the... the I can't think of their names. Also, Steamworld Dig games are like that for me. Just really love those. This is one of those in a way. You're this weird little helicopter thing that's just blowing holes in the ground and trying to collect gems. The gems worth money. If anything, there's a little bit of a nod to like a dwarf game because you kind of look like a little pixel guy dwarf driving this thing. This game could be in the same universe. It kind of could. Like you're after crystals. It's all about the money. There's sometimes a quest or whatever. And when you get to the bottom of this thing, you eventually can escape. There are secondary quests in here. Um, depending on what ship you've unlocked, you have a, different special abilities. This one that we're looking at now, when he when the cooldown pops, he can tear through the wall just by flying through it for a little while. And then when that runs out, he's you know you don't want to do that. You'll get hurt. It's a hit point system. I think you start with three hit points. Um But then they do, they layer on top of this stuff like we've been playing lately with these vampire survivor likes. So uh, do you want three spinny things going around that are chopping blocks while you're busy shooting ahead and they're just taking care of periphery blocks? Good news. You can unlock that and that will be there. Uh, Enemies will start coming into the picture and you got to fight them. Um, You upgrade your guns. You can have more bullets, more damage per bullet. In between rounds, you go and upgrade those abilities. Go back to quote unquote town and you know do all of that before you exit the level then it opens up a whole bunch of adjacent levels and you keep going to these new levels and doing this you know rinse repeat whatever it is the it is exactly my kind of thing i love it i could uh, this has kept me up as much as anything this week i just love this game um it's cheap i think this is like nine bucks eight bucks and it's really that simple if you like digging down, oh, your guys are dwarves. I'm just watching your gameplay video. They're, they're oh, they're totally like dwarves. dwarves. Oh yeah, hell yeah. yeah. They don't like talk or go, oh, you know, make all the quips or anything. They're not like that. But well, I can tell there's some inspiration here, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but it's it's kind of got that whole like these upgrades. These all feel like vampire survivor style style upgrades. Like, oh, your damage, your bullets do more damage next time, or you've upgraded your shield so you can take an extra hit. Uh, you know, that'll be very familiar to anybody who's played those. The difference here is you're not talking about swarms of enemies. The go the goal is to increase your ship's ability just to tear down ground. Increasingly difficult ground, too, by the way. It takes more shots to burn. Weird gl- uh, gas clouds. I found uh, one of these places I went into, everything that was these gray blocks I blew up had f- like these weird big flies in them. And they would swarm me and I'd have to really shoot them to kill them to get rid of them. Mm. So it got real hairy there. Um, but it had a really great goal, you know, like worth a lot of money or whatever. Um, this game's awesome. It's just great. It's simple, really straightforward, perfect for the game, uh, excuse me, game or steam deck. I played a bunch on that. 
and uh, it works already. It, it's currently listed as unknown if it's compatible, but it totally is. Um, and I like it a lot. So if any of these things sound interesting, even like if you used to play Minecraft and just enjoy digging down, I love a game that lets me dig. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Holy crap. And that's that. That's that. Let me put the punctuation on my thoughts on boar blasters. Boar blasters. It's this. Be I think it looks cool. I mean, I like these sorts of things. I like Steam World uh, Dig and stuff like that. I think it's it looks pretty cool. Yeah, if you like that kind of stuff, I mean, things get really wild later. There's uh, like objects you can shoot in the world that will explode. There's uh, green, viney stuff that grows back. So if you don't hurry up and get out of there, it grows back and hurts you. Um, you can explode dynamite and have whole swaths of the place clear out. Right now, I have a girl uh, dwarf whose ability, instead of going through the walls on the cooldown, it just launches these missiles and clears a huge chunk of space for me. That's really fun to mess with. And if you run out of if you run out of uh, gas and die before you hit the goal, which is just to get as much money as you can, don't run out of gas and then get to the big treasure chest at the bottom. It's okay because anything you've already mined still carries over, so you don't lose anything uh, except. You know, you may want to go try to do the goal again or clear the level. Um, yeah, it's great. I love it. It's on Steam. Boar Blaster is under 10 bucks, and uh, it's a total no-brainer if you like those kind of games. Um, and I played a tiny bit of Honkai Star Rail because why not? I'm in the mood for over-the-top stupid well, anime. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, that seems appropriate. Yeah. Uh, I am a little surprised, though, how in-depth that is. That game's not just a gotcha game there's more going on there like there's a full story there is uh i mean i think eventually it, it gets gotcha like um uh, in the way that genshin impact does perhaps same people but this mm -hmm. thing is like a full story it's a turn-based uh rpg has a really cool strategy shit going on got a really good time with it i didn't play that much though but i it seemed it seemed all right um mm -hmm. I had seen, like, I think IGN gave it a nine or something and called it the best free-to-play game ever made. It was a pretty Ooh. lofty thing to say, and I remember thinking, well, I should get in there, and that was months ago. Been out for a while. Um, so I finally tried it, and I really think it's cool. I don't know how much more I'll play because I'm just busy with other stuff, but... Um, That's always the biggest problem. Yeah, I don't Especially have time Especially with this it. genre of gaming. They all tend to be a little long and a little involved. It's yeah. hard to play them all. <laughs> yeah. And they start to blend. I'll admit it. Uh, Unicorn Overlord, Grand Blue, and uh, and even this Star Rail thing. I'm starting to go to wait. Which was the girl with the big giant sword that did that thing? I can't remember which <laughs> game it was. <laughs> so that it's you one would of those be things. able to keep this straight if you put one of them on a body pillow for yourself. Scott. That's what I was thinking. I could just glance at it and go, "Oh right, it's you." And you go, "Oh right, yeah, it's, it's, the one you, I it's like. you, my love. Yes. It's you, my dear." I'd say. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Uh, I, I didn't try it on mobile. I only tried it on uh, PC, but it's it's cool. I like it. Um, what else? Oh, I played more Final Fantasy VII Remake. I played a little more Tales of Arise. I played some retro stuff. Oh, and I installed Final Fantasy XIV again, John. Oh, man. Look at that. Two reasons. One, I'm in the mood. <laughs> I'm in the mood. Yeah. Two. Well, that was two. One, I'm in the mood. Two. Yeah. Um. I wanted to see how this played on controller on that thing on the portal on because Xbox? Yeah, no on oh. the, the I could have done it that way I guess but I was just like well it's on Xbox now we got is. a lot of new players in the game because uh, they can play on Xbox that's right so you got that you got the you got your PlayStation and then you got your PC so I installed it on PC and PlayStation and I just wanted to see if I could get the hang of the controller stuff. I know I think Kyle likes controller with that game, and there are other people. Kyle likes to... it, yeah. Kyle tends to tends to play with the controller when, so he, I, when so, he can. So I did a bit of that. I didn't get very far because it was all brief, and I sent John a little picture of me installing it. Um, we'll see though. Like I I I want to see if my appreciation extends to this concept of Scott quit thinking of all MMOs as World of Warcraft ripoffs, not ripoffs, but do you know what I'm saying? I think we've talked about this. In WoW, yeah, it's I like... I mean, like, uh, you, if you go from WoW to Final Fantasy, yeah. there's familiar enough DNA where you can get in and, you know, get yourself in trouble. Right. They're very, very different games. In fact, I, I've played through Final Fantasy XIV twice, and the reason I played through an insanely long 
RPG story twice because the first time I went through it, I went through it like a WoW player, and that is absolutely the wrong mindset to have going into that video game. Mm. It is it, it will not serve you. Right. Um, in fact, it I think it is to the game's detriment if you play the game that way. So um, yeah, it's it's very very different. Yeah, and um, I and I wanted and, I want to approach it that time this time that way because I've always done like uh, skip that. I don't need to read the text. Just go get the quest, run and do a thing, come back get benefits for doing what i just did that works in warcraft right that's one of the draws of world of warcraft is it's, it would be weird if you didn't play warcraft that way yeah a lot of it anyway right i mean there's story stuff yeah. you want to pay attention to but from what you've said and from what i i don't know i'm just trying to have a different attitude about it and i want to go in there and just see i want to see if i think of it differently will i play it differently will it will it land on me differently will i feel less less like i don't know because when I did it before, it was just like, boy, this is long-winded for a Warcraft-like MMO. And I think that was the wrong uh -huh. attitude. So, yeah. So I'm going to try gotta it. you got to treat it like you're playing a very long role-playing game. Yeah. Yeah. So as you can see, everything I played this week, Japanese uh, made. Well, I guess Honkai is Chinese. Uh, right? Yeah, Star Wars Chinese. And uh, yeah. and then one American game by a tiny developer called Boar Blasters. So there's that. Uh, it's kind of, and it's almost a little core, chore core, you know, digging through dirt and finding gems. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Everybody's favorite job. What do you do? I dig through dirt in my helicopter and I look for gems. That's right. And I kill stuff once in a while if they're down there. Uh, John, let's move to you. Let's talk about, uh, I almost said world war ever. Why would I say that? WWE Ooh. 2K24 is out and John's busy working on frog wrestling 2.0. What's going on over there? Yep. Well, yeah, I've been mostly moving, so uh, almost no uh, video games to speak of for the past week or so. Um, but I have gotten a little bit of time in the in the WWE 2K24, uh, the new release of the game, um, making new wrestlers uh, to update Frog Wrestling. There is no carryover import, so we are starting from scratch on just about everything. I'm a little surprised uh, by that. Does that... Did that shock you that you couldn't? I, I don't know why I thought that would be a thing because these are. I was surprised. Well, I don't know. How do you describe? I was surprised, but also I was like, yeah, it makes sense. I don't. I <laughs> you guess... know, I'm not. I'm not surprised, but you know, here sure. we are. Sure. I, I think there's a rational mm. part of my brain that's like, hey, we live in an age where this should be very easily doable in some form or fashion, and then I'm a hundred percent not surprised that this is the way it's going. Yeah. So uh, Scott's showing some of the 2.0 versions of uh, the wrestlers that we've done. So, so far we've done me based on the Warrior of Light from Final Fantasy. Uh, we got Fast Grandma in there. She's a, she's a favorite from the core community. Man, Fast Grandma's kind of hot. Yeah. She's uh, black and white. Was she that way before? Yeah, she was okay. she was black and white before. It's yeah. amazing. I love that they even uh, let we you got Bo, and I did say I would tell Bo why Bo is all of a sudden very very nude in his <laughs> wrestling, and he's not nude, but he is. Uh, you know, he used to wear a singlet, mm -hmm. and uh, he certainly wore more clothes. Now he is basically in underwear uh, with you know his bandages. Basically, on his it's arm basically and stuff. my sleeping uniform here. Yeah. So uh, here's here's what happened. Here's how we got here is that I was playing around with the creator wrestler. Bo was one of the first people because I just started going alphabetically after I made me and was like, OK, everything's still pretty much the same. I was like, all right, I'm just going to go through the list uh, alphabetically. And so Bo was one of the first people I worked on. And I wanted to check something for an entrance for him him but i hadn't completed an outfit or a look that i liked and so i backed out without saving which wiped out anything i had done because i had put together like a uh -oh. whole you know this is going to be bow 2.0 ensemble and it removed it all and uh i was like hold on i want to see i want to see how this looks and i went back to the entrance for bow and he's currently at the end of uh, last season of Frog Wrestling, he's the Dragon Beef champion. He won the championship for uh, Dragon yeah. Beef. And so I was like, okay, well, I got to see what his I'm wearing a belt entrance looks like. And his naked, because it removed all the clothes, a wrestler 
wearing just the belt genuinely looked like he was coming down to the ring wearing nothing because he just had a big belt that was hiding the trunks that he had on. <laughs> yeah. And I thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. Yeah, it sounds and funny. I was like, well, Bo did ask to wrestle in his underwear once. He made an entire match that was just supposed to be in underwear. Oh, Obviously, yeah. this is an mm. area that Bo feels strongly about. Yeah. So I thought, this is too good of a visual. I have to do it. So it's Bo true that I'm not big basically on clothes. wrestles in. Uh, I'm not a nudist, but I just, you know, clothes. Yeah, you just got a shirt and a pant. You got shorts on and a pair of shoes when you're outside. You're simple, and I like that about you. I don't mean that. I mean, I like I like holding the package in place. Like that makes sense. Yeah, you need some support. I get it. Flopping. I I will say, I don't know if Bo's going to appreciate this because it's the kind of detail he would love somewhere else, or be sad because I did it for his character. Uh, But if you zoom in, I don't know if it's going to show in the pictures. It's very subtle. But if you zoom in on the tidy whities there is a slight stain in the crotchal area. Wait, the front or the back? There is a slight, there is a slight sweat stain on the bottom of the underwear. Again, it's very subtle. It is slightly more yellowed than the rest of the underwear. Oh, we're zooming in. We're going in here. Okay, front. I mean, Bo's finisher as he wipes his hand on his teeth and sticks it in someone's mouth. So I see a little. I see. I see. I see where the discoloration you're talking about. Yeah, it's a little. (laughs) It's even better in the back where it says Lakron. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, I need a sweat uh, stain right in my ass crack. Then you'll be 100 percent accurate. (laughs) It's there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I've been I've been making wrestlers. We've got uh, we've got me done. Are you at least to get out the door? I've got to make a lot of wrestlers. So a lot of it is like it's good enough. Uh, this is Grandma, like a devlog. Bo. It's a devlog. That's what you're doing. You're teasing. You're doing a devlog on your wrestlers. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Nothing wrong with that. By the way, this Dunaway uh, we talked we about a pre-show. Ben. Oh yeah. Oh Ben's yeah, and Brian Dunaway. Yeah. This is amazing. Brian this is the winner. Mega Man. This, is, this is your greatest work, I think. The Mega Man outfit is killing me. It is literally he I saw this prior show and I laughed and spilled coke on myself cuz I just did not expect this. I don't know what I thought I was going to get, but jeez Louise. The little blue underwear, it's freaking perfect. I love it so much. Yeah. I'm I'm really proud of Mega Man Brian Dunaway. Yeah. Mega Man already had like a real like what is this kind of outfit when you really thought about it yeah. and uh, putting Brian Dunaway in it just really, really cemented it for me. So yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what he's going to be mega Dunaway this season. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you know anything about Dunaway, you know that he never goes anywhere without a curled up freaking baseball cap in his face, kind of low hung low like that. And you've always done this with him. It's just something about this blue one. And matching these I colors, s- I don't know. I dude. assume he sleeps and does everything with the hat. Yeah, I never. T- I don't think he ever takes it off. Yeah. <laughs> he has sex with it on. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, we, you never know. Yeah. A few people probably know, but uh, yeah, know. but we may never know. Um, this Spider Man is uh, is that Ben? That's who we're looking at. There. Yeah. So uh, Ben <laughs> Ben was not that creative. I kind of at the end of last season, I was like, yeah, let's do Spider Ben. It's kind of you know he likes Spider Man. I kept giving Ben the worst costumes because uh, he was always there, and I could always ask him. I'm like Scott or Ben, are you okay if I if I do this costume for you? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And so I made him Spider Ben at the end of the season, and then I don't know, just I wasn't feeling creative, and I literally just put him in the Scarlet Spider costume, <laughs> and it's like just straight up stolen this, this costume. It's just not. There's no creativity to it at all, except that I replicated a thing and put a name tag that says Ben on it. Yeah. <laughs> um that's about it so i did go back to the drawing board especially because i did decide that ben needs to be a bad guy uh this season he needs to go back to being bad so i did i resent it afterwards he's now benham uh oh like venom Benham. So, i get it yeah now. yeah right. so now he's gone to the dark side so there's the benham is the last two pictures i sent you so we now have he went from spider ben to benham and uh, now we're gonna have to deal with him. This oh. is this is gonna be the version of him we get. I put spider. <laughs> I put uh, fast grandma perfect. on his head. Then so that works even better. Uh, these are great. I love it. Progress toward 2.0. Uh, no idea what I'm gonna look like, but I I I could be wrong. Maybe I'm just. It's just because you know you see a new car or you buy something new and you just think it's so much 
cleaner or newer, but this this looks really good. Like, do, do I think you feel it like looks it improved? A little better too. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not exactly the same. I like that you're putting fast gram on top of Benham here, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it looks a little bit better. It it I don't know you all look the like ways. Like a Mortal Kombat fighter. Oh, John but does, it, yeah. Uh, Big yeah. time. Seems better. Yeah, you look like uh, who? Uh, Baraka with the blades. You got a little Baraka vibe. Yeah. Like your yeah. Baraka before I the tried accident. To, uh, I tried to do an outfit that was not exactly it, Baraka but was an homage plan. to the uh, <laughs> the Final Fantasy Warrior of Light. Oh, That's yeah. That's what I was going okay. for. Okay. No, that works. I think that so. totally works, but also Baraka with a dental plan is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. If, I love the idea that Baraka just had a dentist, his teeth would be like the rest of us. Yeah. He hasn't been to the dentist. His teeth are overgrown. Uh, they're yeah. terrible. Oh, That's man. what happens. That's why you should always go to the dentist. It's a cautionary tale, really. Do you want to look like Baraka? No. Yeah, no. I get my teeth filed down every six months. Yeah, hell yeah. Well, that's awesome. Uh, more on that coming up soon. Uh, you also you got a little more time with Helldivers, Bellaltro, all that stuff. Yeah, and I went back to Baldur's Gate 3 for some reason. I was like, I don't have any time for video games. What if I played the a, longest a huge one. video game uh, that I've played in the past couple years? What if I just started playing what, Baldur's Gate What did you get Gate up to? Again? Like, from the start? or Yeah, what'd you do? to an old save. Yeah, I started over. Oh, oh man. Uh, New character? What, what class? class? I am playing a rogue. Oh, I'm uh, shocked by this. Keep going. Well, I usually play a bard. Oh, that's this true. Is, this is stretching for me, man. That's true. I, yeah, that's still. <laughs> I, I, th I think Scott, I'll, I'll allow it. Scott's reaction is good. <laughs> no, I <laughs> agree too. I'm go. just like, you know. <laughs> Nothing wrong with what he said there. <laughs> I tried to play a paladin. To be clear, I started over like three times. I tried to play a paladin. I just couldn't do it. What was I it don't a... know how anybody plays D and D and doesn't play a bard or a rogue. Well, that, that was actually my question. What do you do? You feel like this has been true for, of you for a long time. Why do you think those? Or how do I put this? In some video games, like if this was Diablo, you'd say, "Ooh, cool, a paladin! I'll try that." Why? Yeah. Why in D and D do you think those don't appeal to you like they do in other? Well, because in Diablo, you don't get to outwit the devil and just be like, "Hey, man, what if you?" If you rethought your life and roll a dice and he goes, you know what? You're right. I haven't <laughs> rethought my life. That's crazy. That's true. Um, like you, there's a time and a place in Diablo, you're going to get beaten up. So you want to be the tankiest, meatiest, make the most hittest person in the world. Yeah. In D and D like, I want to be able to pick locks. I want to be able to sneak places. I want to be Paladin. able to, uh, deal a lot of surprise damage. I want to be able to, uh, I want to be able to lie. I want to be able to cheat when necessary and, uh, you know, Paladin's talk my way out of note. situations. Yeah, that's Paladin's true. pretty one note in terms of characterization and decision making. Yeah. Like, it's, these are my tenets. I should follow them. And people are like, oh, you should break them. But I don't think that's cool. Like, no, I'm not trying to, like, break. Like, no, I'm a paladin. My job is to observe my tenets. And the best case scenario is I break them in observing my tenants. Like, I'm going to save a little girl, but the church is like, no, you must follow God's will. And I'm like, this is God's will. <laughs> and then I save the girl, and then I become an oath breaker, but I did it for the reason. I can't just be like, uh, oops, I killed somebody in cold blood by accident. Give yeah. me the oath breaker abilities, please. Yeah. So, like, it's pretty flat in terms of playing it. I will say, though, there are some badass options in Baldur's Creek three for paladin because I'm, I'm doing my honor mode playthrough on that although i haven't played in a while but there are some like take no prisoners kind of moments that are kind of surprising where you're just like yeah you're about to die like you're just like wait a second <laughs> like oh i've got to like be hardcore about this like i'm i'm like you you have these dialogue options that are just like you know your robocop basically right yeah. <laughs> right you know and it's not it's not the worst <laughs> actually, well, it's actually and that's what some people want to play so that's great right like that yeah. you want that because yeah. some people want to be that stoic guy but i get it john has a type and you would prefer yeah yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. No I, have, judgments. I have a preferred play style so i'm not saying everybody needs to be a bard or a rogue i yeah. just you know like that's that's what fits into the stuff that i want to play yeah Oh, I got to tell you, because I'm in our multiplayer playthrough, so I'm playing a cleric, right? And I picked Tiamat as the god, but I didn't give much consideration as to what alignment 
my cleric was. So yeah. you know, in Act Two, there's the there's the guy who wants to put that person on trial, the dead person on trial. Yeah. Um, like he who was, he's called or something like that. So you got to go find a ledger, bring it back to him, and then you speak with dead, and then you, he's speaking through the person, or the person's soul is speaking through the character, and you have to decide whether they're guilty or not. And then I got an evil cleric choice option. And I was like, so stab yourself repeatedly in your stomach, and I'll tell you when to stop. And that way oh, you'll man. repent for your sin. And But it's the guy, like the guy's possessed. Mm. So, you know... So, but yeah, she does it. She goes, ugh, ugh. she's like, oh, is that enough? And I'm like, I didn't say stop, did I? And I'm oh like, oh God. man, evil. Cl-. And, I, and she goes, oh, 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 she like stabs herself in the stomach like 50 times. Shit. And then she does. And then, so she repents, you know, like cleric style, like you repent and your soul is free and there's, she repents for her sins. And then the guy takes control of his body and he looks down at all the holes. He's like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would that would suck. And then it immediately combat. I thought he'd appreciate it, but apparently he's <laughs> he's not willing to sacrifice his own body for his justice. Uh, and I'm like, well, whatever, dude. And then we killed him. But I just damn. I was like, there's some surprising choices for every class, and I'm like, I even have had Shadowheart, but she's like kind of a good guy, misunderstood, Shars bitch, whatever. But I didn't realize there's just a full on like. Just full evil, like, cleric option, you know? Like, it's cool. Yeah. I would absolutely wear a shirt that has, like, the shadow heart model with the hand up, you know, like, and it just says, Shar is a bitch or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I would wear that Char's a bit of, Char's a bit of a bitch, you know, but... Yeah. <laughs> we convert, we can, at least in my playthrough, I converted her to Saluna. You know, I did as well. I thought it was yeah. very satisfying. I do like poking at that world and seeing, you know, I'm do- oh, I'm playing as uh, this rogue playthrough is Dark Urge, so mm. I'm getting a oh. lot of interesting options with that. So nice. Yeah. Did you play as a lady or a dude? Uh, lady. Okay. Have you done a dude playthrough at all, or is it all ladies? Uh, yeah, my first playthrough was a Stanley Billings. Oh, that's right. I knew that. I was just curious. I've not yet done that. But my daughter beat the game, beat Baldur's nice. Gate 3 the other day. And I said, I, you've officially, you, John, and Bo have all beat it before I did. So congratulations. Well done. I am once again slow to getting anything done. It's, a, it's a long game. Yeah, and you have a lot of... You know, I have a lot of arcade games stop, to play. So. You have to stop being into anime, I think. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I need. I need a shadow heart uh, bed pill, or a body pillow. That's what I need. Look, that would have been one. Scott, that's the closest I've seen you to the cusp of uh, body pillow. I like her. I like her a lot. Because yeah. week after week, you came in here to tell us how much you liked her. Yeah. I mean, or that he likes her, but he won't play with her. Or he I'll get a late. I want a just, lady Jessica from uh, from Dune. I'd wear that pillow all every day. My wife not, may not be happy about is that, that. Is that Paul's mom? Yeah, Rebecca Rebecca Ferguson's version of her is. Mm. She's so good. If there's an MVP of these two Dune movies, it might be her. She's so good. Gosh dang it! Oh my gosh, guys, you have to see that second movie. We have to talk about Austin Butler. I, my mind is blown. I don't even know what... I can't think of anything but Dune right now. Maybe all this anime is trying to... Maybe maybe this is psychological. I'm just trying to balance my life because if it wasn't for that, this, I, Dune is all I'd think about. It's all i Because you can't... You, now that you've watched Dune, there's no more Dune to watch and you're watching of anime is a desperate clutch to get that fleeting time back when you were watching the movie. Maybe, like... I start counting on things like the Fallout series being great, and it's also kind of you know because it's in my genre genre likes, so I, I'll be cool with it. Uh, I you know they are working on some follow up Dune TV stuff. Um, I forgot the name of it, but it I think it follows the Children of Dune stuff. I'm not sure, but whatever that is coming, I'm all Dune about that. Just keep bringing <laughs> Dune Nine One. <laughs> that sounds like shit to me, but whatever. <laughs> I'm just I'm just obsessed. Anyway, well, John, that's great. Continue down the road, and may your urges be dark in this playthrough. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also played more Bellaltro as well, but uh, everyone knows about that. Uh, Bo, 
Let's Hi. dive into your world, your world. For All me. right, guys. I'm sorry. I'm I'm, fu- I'm in a full wow hole right now. It's just every week it gets worse and worse. So I don't got much to share on games I played. I played World of Warcraft. Uh, I'll do a summary real quick of of it, of the things. I've got a robot chicken, and when I press the space bar, it looks like the chicken's head's poking through my torn hands, and I'm like jacking my chicken basically. So that's awesome. Great. Yeah. Um, it's like the no, it's like the gnomish mount, right? But in classic, you can only get your mount at least at level forty until you get exalted with your oh, other right. reputations, which you don't have. So, thermoplug plug drops a mount, and I'm super special, and I show off my. You got it. Right Did now. you streamer privilege it? I streamer privilege. I basically I talked about it early. I'm like, I don't think there's anything I want in Overgone except the mount, and then it dropped, and I was like, all right, guys, I've never wanted anything more in my life. I will forgo <laughs> loot in the next four raids. Just give me this thing. They let you have yeah, it. Course, Proud but, of yeah. you for doing it. Look, here's the deal. It's not like it's nothing. Nobody can claim that you are a fair weather season of discovery player. Yeah, sure. You are there. John's internet's going. Oh, oh, yeah, John, your internet's going. Are you I there? I really want to hear what he has to say. Multiple hey. oh. times <laughs> a week. Most facile. You're. you're no, it's it's bad. It's I think bad. the kids John, really the kids started I up think Netflix. Two percent of that, but it was a good two percent. Yeah, it was a pr- it was a fun two percent. Okay, maybe you're good now. Try try again. Yeah. I think I'm back. Am I back? I think oh, you're back. Well. We're we're gonna hope. We're gonna. Nope. As soon as I talked, it went back down to bad again. Oh, are they down? Someone no, downloading? Not bad now. Okay, we're good. Yeah, for now. Good. Get off the Netflix. <laughs> I know. Everybody, log off the internet. Yeah. What are you doing? Don't do it. This is why we had an extender, so you didn't have to. Be on my Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, it's not like you are a fair weather season of discovery person. That's all. Uh, I'm yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think I think it was deserved, and, th- and everyone took. It was a good photo op. Everyone bowed down before my chicken and Ogremar, and I got a good picture. Of it. Hey, yeah. while you're like holding it like a wiener, they were all bound down. Yeah. To it. Yeah. Like 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 I literally holding my hands like this around, and that's how we steer it. Like the torn steers it like this with the, with the neck. It's pretty disgusting. It's oh. the best thing that's oh, happening. Man. Bowed discovery. down to it. That's fantastic. Well done. Yeah. Anyways, so but I've been playing a lot. I'm like I'm spamming Warsong Gulch games because I'm trying to get exalted with Warsong Riders. You remember Warsong Gulch? Oh yeah. <laughs> you remember? Yeah. All the time I spend in there, I feel like it may have been wasted, but at least you're having a good time. You know? Well, you know, I'll be playing other games at some point, so it's fine. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I got I got a hunter. I've been playing hunter and priest and warrior all up to forty, which is kind of nice to have these phases because I don't got to do the whole slog. It's like it's just fifteen levels. Sure. And with the double XP and then the quadruple XP, it doesn't take that much time. You're the most hardcore and, uh, WoW player I know right now, by the way, of all my I know, friends. That's why I'm like I'm like I got to play these other games. Why do I want to play World of I think it's I, I, I think it's fine. You should go. You should follow your muse, no matter who it is. But I just uh, think it's interesting that you went from. You went from my person who was the least interested a while ago. I mean, and it's still true of retail, but you were always kind of like, oh, I've done all that. I mean, I can't. I'm never playing WoW again. To like the most hardcore WoW person that I currently well, associate with. Hardcore brought me in, right? Like hardcore, just that challenge was interesting enough for me to try a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it made it easier to slip on a season of Discovery slippers. Yeah, I but, can see that. Um, but there's a lot of people in the community who still play and the guild and stuff. I find I look forward. We got we got a good crew in there. I like playing with them. So it's it makes a giant difference, but, right? Yeah, it's like, like it's like I don't do anything barely with rando or strangers. It's like you log in. It's like who wants to run Scarlet Monastery? We all jump in the bed, dis, vent or what or Discord. Sorry, something <laughs> vent. You know, <laughs> vent. You but really love the classic. Check out what we're gonna do on uh, Thoughtbot, and yeah. uh, you know, it's, yeah, look pretty up much. Like it's it's, it's been Shadow a good Panther. <laughs> it's been a good vibe. Like all the negative stuff you hear, it's about you know, it's the usual shit with Warcraft and the solo players. But if you got a good community, it's good. I think. Um, yeah. I think it's just been good. It's like it's you know, like it's like I said about K-pop, where it's just like I'm like I'm only gonna play a little bit, but it turns out World of Warcraft's a good flavor, and I'm just fully in that hole. So I you know, hope not. Yep. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I have like <laughs> my to-do list. I'm so stressed out because the my to-do <laughs> list in games is like it grows every day. I even just bought four games while we were recording the show. <laughs> really? What? 
Yeah, well, Horizon Zero Dawn's on sale for like 15 bucks. Oh, I'm right, the sale, the spring sales today. Yeah, That's right. so I'm like, I bought that, and I bought Helldivers 1 because it's on sale for like $2 or $4 or something. I was like, oh, let me check that out sometime. And then what else did I just buy? I bought something else, too. <laughs> I think that's great, dude. Oh, I bought Tales of Arise. It's also on sale for like 20 bucks. Oh, yeah, that's a good cheap price I was for like, that. It looks awesome. I just want to give it a try. I'm like, win. <laughs> You just bought a PlayStation to play Final Fantasy. Like, what the hell's wrong with your brain? Yeah, there's it's a but, lot. So, it's a lot for sure. It stresses me out a little bit to be super into WoW, but I figure it won't last forever. You know, it's just like I'm having a, the season's been fun. They did a great job, and who knows? I'm still holding my breath, hoping they announce something incredible in like three, four or later, where everyone decides they wants to play. You know? Yeah. I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah. Um. Anyways, moving on to the other games I played. Um, speaking of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, so I'm having a problem with that game. Explain. Uh, not the graphics Grognar, Grognar problem. It's the RPG problem. You know, you just can't get into a game. Mm. Yeah. And you don't know why. Like, Witcher 3 was like this. Love that game. I dropped off, and I could never pick it back up. I've tried right. a couple times. Just couldn't find the time to settle into yeah. it. Yeah. I'm midway through like a Dragon 2 right now, and that's... You know, I'm just like not settling down and finding the time to get into it, and I'm I'm I having an this... issue with Fallout Three. It's mm. one of my all-time favorite games, and I didn't play it until like all the DLC and expansion it's... stuff was out for it because I couldn't, I could never get into it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like Cyberpunk, the expansion, I really want to play that. <laughs> I'm just like, gosh, I played the original game again and then dropped off, and I just can't. It's like you got to force yourself to play it yeah. and like not be into it for an hour and just like let it get back in and it just feels uncomfortable to do that. So I tried playing Final Fantasy 7 like off stream and stuff rebirth this week a couple times and I was like I just can't like get into it and I don't think it's the game's fault or anything. I'm just like having a hard time. It's because it just like I do it. this all the time so I can completely relate. I think John can relate. Probably everybody can, but is it because like when that happens to me, it's because I'm playing a very specific other kind of thing, and then when this something I think like, Hell Divers messed me up, right? Like it's just, yeah, that's that's a, yeah, that's a good example. Yeah, Hell Divers probably did it. Cocaine because I'm partial to cocaine. <laughs> like <it's>, like <laughs> I RPGs love this. Feel like the heroin you put between your toes, yeah. and Hell Hell Divers is like crack in a cocaine video. You know, it's like it's high energy jolting. So I can't settle down and wait for people to talk about their feelings, mm. you know, and go through a menu and do stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I understand that. So I think I'm just like on a vibe where I can't really do that. I think WoW is just easy because I turn it on and I can just find something to do really quick and immediate. Mm. And um, it's not that absorbing. I can second screen some stuff and play that. Um, but but there's a little bit Rebirth's fault because the opening... So they open the game at a point where like like there's a, the first arc of the story's happened and it's crescendoed and then you're in this low, everyone's catching up. And I don't know if they did the most compelling job because uh, I played through the whole of the first chapter, which is really just setting the groundwork, I think, for later cool shit, but it's a little cold. And I forget half the stuff that happened in Rebirth that's different from the original game because you oh. kind of have to remember, you know, like, yeah. like. So what I did an experiment. I log, I downloaded Remake, and played the first chapter of Remake, and it was definitely way easier to play. I had to like stop myself. I was like, okay, hang on, <laughs> you're not gonna play the whole game, are you? Yeah. Like the opening to Remake is like absolutely phenomenal, and I think the opening to Rebirth is okay. You know, like it's just it's kind of okay. Like, be, yeah. not, but it's but it's not trying. If they're basing it on the original game, you're not at a point where you're trying to hook the player in, because they're, they're all sitting around going like, "What happened?" You know, and and it's just very like kind of like just a, a low vibe. So I, I was having a hard time getting started in that game. I think hmm. I can um, understand that but, though. Like, yeah. yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. And, uh, do do you, you know, feel they, like? Do you feel like? Um, I mean, does it feel like the second game is more ambitious? They filled it full of mini games. In a weird way, it feels like they Yakuza-fied it just a little bit. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I've gotten to play Queen's Blood. Um, I've played three rounds of it so far. Got potential. It's not hmm. for their version of Gwent. I'm like, I it's kind of dope. I'm like, I'm okay with it. Like, I want to play more Queen's Blood. I just, like, the game it seems good. There's no problems with the game. I just can't settle into it. I think some of it is, like, there's. it's just... You know, it's 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 at a point where they're trying to catch up on 
what's been happening and i just i'm not in the flow of the rpg right like because it's been a couple of years since the last one it might even be three years since i played the last one so i just i just don't have that momentum yeah. push and yeah. the game's not not giving me much and i don't i know why sephiroth's bad i don't i think they went pretty <laughs> pg yeah because this the, this game starts showing you like where sephiroth went you know went went bad or broke bad or whatever you call that but he's like obviously he's murdering people but it's not like yakuza where they try to they, they're like yakuza like we want to make sure you hate this guy and beat him up and it's like this is more just like i'm a bad guy <laughs> i got a big sword <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't actually feel like the the <laughs> The anger towards him, you know, but maybe if I'd been playing from the beginning of the rebirth to that point, it would that momentum would carry me, you know, it's just something like that. But, um, I got a big sword, me, me, I'm Stephanie. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, don't keep me from my mom. <laughs> That's amazing. So, no, I get I it. I think it's gonna get good. I think it's just like it's, I just need like to be in the right headspace, and it's not happening right now. Uh, someone in the chat, Crimson Neon, says PlayStation 5 Pro specs just leaked. Let's see if we can yeah, I just saw that. I just looked it up. Um, oh, great! I'm glad I, I bought. I haven't been able to. <laughs> haven't been able to verify if this is like a real leak or if this is just everybody reporting on a rumor. But um, they're saying uh, holiday 2024 for release, two to three times faster ray tracing, sometimes 4x than base PS5, approximately 45 percent faster rendering than base ps5 um it and looks like they're gonna have some form 5? of super <laughs> resolution <laughs> it barely it lightly used uh let's see upscaling they have some kind of built-in dlss stuff they want they're putting into this which will help with frame rates um i wonder if this is true i mean this may be true may not be true and also, I don't know what Microsoft's plans are because it sounded like they were not doing a mid, mid-cycle mid upgrade because I don't think either company benefited much from that Pro upgrade. So I'm a little surprised to hear Sony might be doing that. They might Saying it's going to be $500. Huh. I'm gonna, heard, here, here's the one thing I will say about this. There's no way I would buy this because I, I have a PlayStation 5 that I acquired from my parents yeah. and uh, it doesn't get used very much. But I will say this, it, if the picture that's associated with this is accurate, and this is the style they're going for it, I love the design of it. <laughs> because the picture I'm seeing of it is a throwback to the original PlayStation. Oh, do you have, where's that? I'm, none of the leaked things um, I'm seeing show that. Um, let me, I'll just share a, I'm going to put it in the chat because I'm in the wrong window for, for it. Oh, uh, is it this fat looking? Not this fat looking thing. This is fake. No. I put a link in the YouTube chat. Okay. If you want to click that. I'll look at it here. Uh I don't again, I don't know if it's true. I don't know if the leak is true. So I I think it we're still in the I room. Had time to research it, but yeah. we're in, we're in the realm of rumor, but a lot of sites are um leaking or a lot of new sites are reporting it, so it must be confirmed to some extent. I would be bummed Bo, if if it's real, I'm going to be annoyed because you just got yours. That's going to annoy me. Yeah. I don't know if this image is true. I feel like if this image was true, everybody would be running with it, and I'm not seeing it anywhere else. Yeah, these renders are usually a little suspect. Maybe. Yeah, um, so I don't think that image is true. Made it, I'll yeah. say this. Whoever designed that, that thing is fire looking. That yeah. thing looks great. Oh, I see another version where it's a, it's based on the PS2. So, yeah, I think this is stuff that people are making up. But, man, that looks good. My favorite is this fat one. Let me, look at this. You guys will like this. Uh, put it in Discord. <laughs> this is on another site with the same, you know, same rumors. But <laughs> look at that fatty. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> look at that thing. Oh, looks weird. I feel like they just stretched it and did a little Photoshop stretch and called it good. Look, Looks like a quesadilla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds good right now. Gosh dang it. I'm hungry. I had a big old quesadilla for little suppers. Awesome. That sounds great. Um, Burrito gringo. You also played Little Spider-Man too. That's cool. How's so that? that's the one good news for new games. I did actually try a new game this week because um, I was checking out my PlayStation. And, well, 
I decided to play ye old um, <laughs> Spider-Man 2 that I got for free with my purchase of the uh, shitty version of the PlayStation, <laughs> soon to be shitty version of the PlayStation 5. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. and I didn't mean, I didn't mean to play as much as I did as <laughs> like I logged in and you know, it just, it, it's got the cool, I guess Sony with their games does this thing where instead of giving you a full menu, it just says press X to start. Yeah. And then the second time you play, it's got a different screen with the full menu options. So, right. so it like sucked me in and like, I haven't played one or Miles Morales and two, it seemingly, uh, there's already a status quo and a story going on. Like Miles Morales and Peter Parker are friends that hang out and do shit together. And yep. I was like, oh, okay. There's definitely or been he, some middle Peter story. Peter Parker's the teacher and Miles is the student in the class. Uh, anyways. Yeah. Um, it didn't matter because the Sandman basically comes in after about two minutes of cinematics to, you know, mess shit up. And um, all I can say is, wow, that game was pretty fun. <laughs> that game was pretty <laughs> It's pretty spectacular, no pun intended on the spectacular Spider-Man title, but uh, sure. the swinging around the city was pretty cool, and like the fighting's just like he's as manic as you'd expect Spider-Man to be. Like it's not, it's not like Batman where it's a little slow, you know, Arkham series. You know, you got the dodge and the poo, poo, you hear the punches. Sure, you're like flitting all over the place like a crazy spider. You never played the so first spiders fight in the wild. They, they so spiders known for the agile. <laughs> yeah. So did you never you never played the 2018 game or the follow up miles? No, it's my first okay. Spider Man experience. So it was fun. I was like, wow, this game's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's yeah. a good game. Yeah. So um, I don't. I you know who knows if I'll get back to it or not. But like definitely checking it out. I, you know, it's worse ways to spend your money. Um, and and it it's good. Like it. You know, the I really controls were responsive, it. the graphics were pretty decent, and um, I mean, it was just like very crazy set pieces, you know, it was like, it was just pretty... Yeah, turns out Insomniac knows how to, yeah. they know how to yeah. make cool games, yeah. those guys. They make a and fun like, game. tons of voice work throughout the whole thing, like definitely, like you're, you're, you're playing like 20 minutes of like cutscene, but you're like, man, a lot of work probably went into this whole smorgasbord of fighting Sandman as a giant Sandman. It was good. Yeah. And that Sandman was, yeah. I thought, very cool looking. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah. Like everything about it felt pretty. Like it felt pretty cinematic for a movie. I was like, oh, like this is this is the PlayStation experience of video games. Whoa, you know, I was like, Whoa. it's very movie like. <laughs> yeah, you know? this is what this is what they bring you to the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was impressed with it. It was good. Nice. I think uh, the one thing about the game that does talked about, but I think is one of the most impressive of things they did with the spider-man series how intuitive the controls are yeah you i i have found now granted oh no am i dying again no, you were but you're back oh, you're but you're back now oh, just you're barely back. just That's barely you're good you're, I'm you're moving. hanging in there i'm moving to another house now. you've got all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right time to move no you sound good now you came back whatever happened there if you can hear okay. us okay maybe you don't hear us i don't know go yell at everybody and tell them to get off the internet again yeah oh can you hear us now? I don't think you can hear us. Yeah, yet. I can hear. No, I, I mean, can. I, did... I don't know if you can hear me though, because I'm getting the delayed reaction to everything. Yeah, it's just oh, delayed. Delay. So we're hearing them, but we're getting a big delay from you. Adam. I maybe join and leave the call or something like that. Yeah, you yeah, refresh the that. call. I'll be back. <laughs> no worries. Uh, well, that's good. But yeah, no. But yeah, he wanted to have some comments on Spider Man, so we'll just hold on to that, that thought. Yeah. But uh, I'm genuinely impressed with them, um, as he was saying, how well that game controls and stuff. It's yeah, they're good. It's right? very, I was, it, I was, you know, cause not that I believed it was bad, but you know, sometimes people like things, and you're like, okay, you're a little biased because you like Spider Man or whatever. But right, um, it was pretty decent. I get that feeling too sometimes, and I it keeps me away from some game experiences. Maybe that's part of why I'm enjoying these quote unquote anime games because I'm getting past my biases on them. I don't know. Yeah, but they look really good nowadays. Like we're we're in a new era where like, it's almost especially new. on PC, like yeah. computers are way better than what they even need to be for their ambitions on animation. So they can just look spectacular as like TV animation. Yeah, we're at the point where nothing looks bad anymore, really. Uh, you John, have to try anyways. You have to to make King Kong or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, that's yeah. true. That's on sale, it's by a, the way. That's uh, some forty percent off. So if you want to get the King Kong game, it's now's your chance. Yeah, uh, really trying to make something. Better, though, I think. <laughs> John, sorry, you're back. Uh, you had some Spider Man thoughts. I'm back. I guess I don't know. Yeah, Who you knows? look good. Yeah, right. you're synced up Thanks. and everything. Yeah, 
Uh, you wanted to talk so about bad. Spider-Man. You had to yeah, the thought. controls are good. That's all I want. <laughs> I agree. If you, yeah, no, I agree. It's very intuitive for how much jumping around you do. You know, you could easily say you make that complicated, and it somehow. Somehow I was pressing buttons and it was doing what I wanted it to do, but I couldn't tell you what the buttons are. <laughs> like, you know, you're like X is to dodge, L1, L2 is to swip ahead, but then mm-hmm. just L1. You know, I, I couldn't tell you what the buttons do, but I was jumping around like crazy. I think John's not moving or animating anymore. Is it just me or is he sitting really still? No. Oh, is he moving at all? No. Oh. <laughs> Because he's looking at me like uh, I agree, but then I'm like, "You're agreeing I'm very curious. long." You guys, <laughs> older man. Yeah, he's not moving. He's I'm gonna all... unplug the internet and plug it back in, and I will be back. You guys, have a, have all a good right. Time. We're back. back we're minute. about to do the break anyway. This is perfect timing. So yeah, uh, yeah. we'll take our break. When we come back from this break, John will hopefully have some internet going for him, and uh, we'll uh, finish some things out. We got some news to talk about. Uh, we got some voicemails, some other cool stuff. So please. Stick around. I'll put up a screen with five minutes and the uh, chat room will be right back. Everybody at home, it'll be like nothing for you. So we'll see you in two seconds. BRB. All right. See you guys in a sec here. Looks like we're good to go. Here we go. And we've returned. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to continue down this path, this road that we're on, and uh, dive directly into some extra news that we didn't cover earlier. So let's do that now. Where is it? <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection came out, and people are pissed. Uh, they had really no server capacity. Three servers at launch for 64-player maps. <laughs> Three servers. Insane. It's also got major glitches. People are having all kinds of problems. I heard somebody say today, how do you take a game that worked and make it not work? Uh, like, what happened? Um, anyway, the, the biggest problem was there were only 364 player servers ready at launch. Uh, for nearly 10,000 users to start with, that's not enough. Everyone's in line. Nobody can play. And uh, it's a, you know, $34 game. And people are mad. So yeah, I also heard watched. this is a, like a 73 gigabyte download for this game. Oh, that's, uh, yeah. The other thing was that this was originally like a, I don't know, the original game was like six gigabytes at the most. And this one's like way bigger and, and bigger than it should be for what it is because... They didn't really do much. They just up um, and they didn't add like new assets or anything. So nobody knows why it's so big. People think bad code. <laughs> um, and it's by, it's made by those people that get people get mad at all the time. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's a that's a long list. Asp, Asper, <laughs> no Asper, A S P R Y R. Those guys, they're always doing the ports. They're they're in trouble again. Asper's always in trouble though feels like they get it wrong every time. They were the ones that everyone was mad at with Batman Arkham Asylum at the time, or Arkham oh, Knight. Man. They were mad at, can't remember who else, but they do this all the time. Anyway, that's a mess, and it's currently at overwhelmingly negative reviews on Steam as a result. <laughs> yeah, you fucked up EA. That's yeah. <laughs> nice joke. Nice going, classic, guys. Classic EA launch at this point. Uh, we're back, everybody. <laughs> well, here's some good news. We got a good launch happening. Pre-orders for Sea of Thieves on PS5. That was kind of a big deal because it was going multi-platform and everybody was talking about it. Uh, we're at number one for a very long time. No one quite expected that. Feels like maybe Microsoft is sort of proving their point about what they mean about putting their games other places because, I don't know, people buy them. Uh, it even beat the Elden Ring expansion pre-orders uh, for a time there. So, so what, what you read from this is that there are a bunch of people who can't play Sea of Thieves except on their PlayStation who really want would love it if the game was on their platform. Yeah, turns out. It's almost like platform mm. exclusivity is a dumb idea. Mm. Is there anybody working at Xbox PlayStation listening? Like, tell all your bosses, dumb. Just well. dumb. Like, capital D. You think you're profiting, but you're not. Well, uh, X- Xbox that, would agree with you right now. That line now. never got anyone in trouble, right? That, right. That's, yeah. Right. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's a good thing to say, right? It does seem, it, it seems like <laughs> Xbox agrees with you, and it's Sony we're going to have to convince, and Nintendo, I guess, for that matter. But I mean, it, it, depending on the season, it's all of them, because they're companies, and I what I picture is certain people get in charge with certain ideas, like, we don't sell games on PC because we hate mo- game, when our games get modded. <laughs> And you're like, shit, we hired one of those. How do we get, we can't just fire them for that. You know, like, but, yeah. but really, if you, I don't think anyone wants you. 
this is all just made up in my head. So, you know, I, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big idiot, but I, th- I feel like nobody wants you at that company, you know, anymore. If you, that's well, you wouldn't you be curious, like if Nintendo just took one game and released it on PC at the same time as whatever their hardware it would say, is? They just... would... Sorry, I interrupted you. No, go ahead, because half the time you can't even hear me anyway. So I think <laughs> the more you guys talk, the better. Um, well, but I... just see how it does. It's the yacht. It's the yacht protocol. It's just like, can you tell? Can somebody show the guy who's saying no, like a yacht and what he could have? Yeah. And maybe not a yacht. Maybe he just wants a second home in another country. Maybe you want to be a player in the screen game. No, <laughs> you know don't do that. It's terrible. Yeah. Um, but you know, do you, do you like money? Do you want money? Like life is short. The, your family could really put that money to use. It'd be awesome. Just release it on everything and shut up. Like, yeah. Oh my God. I wish they would. And the thing is with like um, uh, Sea of Thieves. I mean, it's it's great proof that people want to play a lot of those games. And I would feel the same way if Sony was a little bit more free about putting their stuff in other places. But it's just too early to say whether this uh, this is an early I, example of maybe this this new movement but i don't know if it's definitive like it's one example there's a, there's an intersectionality with particularly consoles and that kind of thing and like the collector thing yeah so mm-hmm. like putting everything everywhere sort of undermines the collector thing especially when you're like making prestige pieces right like yeah what's something that people collect like you know you don't want everyone making your toy or sticker i don't know i'm really bad at the collecting stuff like, but you know like you know there's something to be like these are n- official nintendo products and get all your official per- paraphernalia and people like collecting it and owning it and this is my nintendo shrine and or whatever you know yeah that stuff's at so risk that, it's at risk if we if this happens you're absolutely yeah, right Yeah, that probably bleeds into the people who make the games that have these opinions too where they want to have the the toy line or whatever line and it be Enshrouded, and they could still do that though it's just going to change the games now have the responsibility yeah, of being they, unique I mean, you know and saying well I, I, who cares who published it buy our collector's edition because it's got the cool statue yeah. in it and, and like maybe because this is how competition works maybe you're like we release it on everything but the best version is on our console because our console is better than your pc because mm. we're actually trying oh, like stop could... phoning it in with your hardware and actually release <laughs> like make give me a reason to be like that's why I bought a Quest. I can't stick my face into my uh, PC and play VR or put my face up close. I need the hardware for the cool experience. So, like, do that with your consoles, like, you know, already. Part of the cheaper. problem is you have these things went into pre-production in 2018, 2019. Yeah, a lot yeah. has changed since then. Like, And they don't make money on them, so they're trying to cut, you know, like PlayStation cut corners on its box and Xbox mm-hmm. cut corners on... It looking cool, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> I think well, that, I, just got I like white, that. I got one. this white nondescript box that could be anything. I well, mean, that's the, true. I think the cheapo the, version. I think the S is ugly, but I think that the the, is, the, 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 the series X is cool. I'm yeah. thinking of the S because the S just look. It could could be a toaster for all you know. Like it's <laughs> it really looks. It's the most nondescript looking piece of hardware I've ever seen in my life, and you know, yeah, it's it, yeah, it just lacks personality completely. I saw a black one. Like a, Somebody modded theirs to be black, and it's way cooler yeah. looking. So much better looking. I wish they would have done black on that but one. But still, it's not much different than a Roku box, right? Like, Roku's just a small little puck or whatever. Like, it's... Yeah. You're not like, wow, this thing's cool. But a Super Nintendo, you're like, why did they make it this way? I don't know. But mm. it has a neat look, you know? Or even the Switch has a kind of nice design. Yeah. PS5's, Steam, a, but, PS5's got a bold design. It's a crazy, kind of weird, yeah. you know? You know, it's just one of those things where even if you don't appreciate these kinds of things, you can still identify it as the pro- like that's a PlayStation, right? But yeah. Oh, all that to say is like the the point. I, I we lost point is just that it's um understanding that they sell these things at a loss because they're still convinced people wouldn't pay a lot of money for them. Um, they want the installs, but I think they've got to like you know it's always an arms race between PC. Like it's it's always been an element to all this but the the consumer segments have been separated but they're not separated anymore a lot of people who are willing to own consoles are willing to own pcs or they just have phones and they play on their phones yeah you know like you can't you can't like rely on it being a different segmented thing everyone plays 
everything everywhere all at once, kinda. So kinda, yeah. You gotta make your shit cool. I do. It, I'd lo- I'd so play... I don't need a new PlayStation 6 or a new Switch or a new Xbox if it's just gonna be uh, not as good as my PC again. Like, what's why? So the, all they have is exclusives. It's yeah. the only thing they can lean on. Yeah. And it's lame. Yeah. But that, I mean, I don't know if that's gonna change in the next 10 years, but I think it'll change in the next it's 20. It's not, but you know, it'll have to change at some point. Just how I feel about these things. We've talked about it a lot, I guess. No need to rehash it. Uh, what else? Summer Games Fest, uh, June 7th. So we'll be doing some coverage of that. Watch for that coming up. Uh, we'll see if it's... Oh, nice. Uh, That's the Keeley joint, right? Yeah, Keeley's summer joint where they just show off a lot of <laughs> new games and whatnot. What is it? In a couple of weeks? Or no, June, summer, June so. 7th, summer, yeah. yeah. So that's a ways off. They just announced it. Hey, when's that, when's that... John, you played it, the demo for it, the Mech Farmer game. That's soon, isn't it? Like Mech Farmer? Uh, when is it? Yeah, something Frontier. I, I saw it on my wish list. It's like Lightyear Frontier. I think it's Lightyear Frontier, like that. that's it. Um, I want to buy that the minute it's available, and I just was reminded that I... Can we play it together, know. too, please? Uh, I will, if you guys want to do some co-op in there. We're playing Tuesday for sure, but I don't think that game's out yet. No, I don't mean Demo is available March 19th. <gasps> what? That's... That's three days. days. Wait, demo. You mean uh, no you know, early access. planned release date? Early access, March nineteenth. Oh, three days. Three days, guys. All I'm right. getting that. I mean, when's yeah. Dragon's Dogma next week? Also, shit. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't the play every day. I believe maybe, Dra- yeah. maybe Dragon's Dogma God can wait. You know, maybe it's not that good. Maybe no. I think that thing is gonna be. That <laughs> no, looks like can't, Bo. It, it looks like it's gonna be really good. I'm like, um, I, um, but I really want Light Your Frontier, so I'm buying it the minute it's available. All right, I have now. Oh, I already wish listed. What am I talking about? Here it is. Yeah, it's not on sale yet. I was gonna go ahead and. Oh, that's on Game Pass game. Day One. I might just do that. Oh, there you uh, go. On my PC, yeah, I'll just do that. I don't know. We'll see. Pal oh, world was shit cool. on there on day one, but uh, let's see what else. Uh, hilarious uh, Tekken Eight exploits sees opponents in tremendously large hats to win games. This I, is good. This I haven't seen this watch. yet. Let's pull this up here. This is new. This is late breaking, guys. I thought there was some embedded in this article. <clears throat> yeah, there, there's some tweets or X's embedded in the article. Okay, let's take a look at this one. See more. One oh, what the actual f word? That's a good one. Oh gosh, this guy. Oh my gosh. That's a hat? Yeah, so it's apparently broken cosmetics that make the hat <laughs> oversized. <laughs> it, something you're playing online and this giant hat just kicks your ass and you can't see what's going on underneath the hat, so it's an exploit, right? Like That's it, amazing. It reminds me it, it reminds me of the big hat thing they had in Resident Evil Village when yeah, the more watch you the second one it. too. The second one's pretty good as well. It's lower down in the article. Let's see here. Because it's like it makes no sense. Uh, let me turn that down. So. Are you working? What kind of work? Round one. What is that? Fight. I don't know. But it's <laughs> There's no way. That's just ridiculous. That looks like a giant cube just fighting. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's really dumb. They're really funny. Anyways, it's worth, I love it's it. Worth the watch. No, I love that kind of <laughs> stuff. By the way, we didn't even talked about it. I meant to bring it up, but the. Dragon's Dogma uh, character creator thing caused quite the little stir because everybody was making really uber ugly characters and stuff like that. But the biggest thing that yeah. impressed me was when they were trying to be serious about making characters, it's a little too on the nose. Like it feels like there's lawsuits coming because they nailed, for example, every character, every major character in Baldur's Gate 3 I've seen in that creator and they're yeah, indistinguishable. Yeah, really? was crazy. Like crazy. Zell was actually really good and she's not even like, it's not like, Gith Yankee is in Dragon's Dogma. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great point. And so they had to make all that up, right? They had to make up for it. We saw that one of, um, uh, I saw a God of War one, a Kratos one that just looked like it was taken right out of God of War 2. Like, like it, it feels lifted. Um, somebody made the whole Dune cast. They all look just like the actors. It's freaky as shit. I don't know how they're doing it. And they're making really ugly stuff too, which is also fun. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got one for you. <laughs> Put it in there. Put it in. Is it in our thing? There you go. Uh huh. Stick it in our deal. <laughs> oh yeah. See, that's great. See, that's Michael Jackson the way I remember him. Look at this guy. Yeah, it's Gith Yankee 
We get the Yankee Michael Jackson. Do all of them have the jacked up chest thing? They all got this weird caved in chest thing. Is that part of the story? Like, because uh, I don't think uh, you can change that. Every one I've seen Although with a shirt. I think that relates to uh, that. Definitely relates to the story of the first one, but might be for the second one too. Okay, because even the one we saw of a uh, dude from Curb, um, Leon, it had he has the big scar like that. And I thought, oh, I must be game related or story related. Oh my or something. God. <laughs> Did you find another good one? <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is who I think it's supposed to be, but it just looks hilarious to me. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, it that's Shaggy like... from uh, Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Oh, yeah, that is totally. It, just, it doesn't uh, look realistic, but it kind of does. It's just, <laughs> why would you want to play this guy? I mean, that the point. I guess the point is, and that's why they released this early, is because there's so much shit you can do with the creator. Apparently, it's going to keep John there for days. If I had to guess, John, you may never play this game. You may just play this. I, I, Frog Wrestling Season 2 is going to be Dragon's Dog, I guess. <laughs> You should make. You should see if you can make Although all of us. That would be if there was a way to auto battle them in the game. That might be a direction to take. Frog wrestling, medieval wrestling. Yeah, dude, yeah. that could be fun. It yep. could be very fun. It'd be medieval times and frog pants. I've play. said it before, and I will say it again. I think that the Resident Evil engine is so much more capable of cool shit than people give it credit for. Every time I play one of those RE games, I go, "Man, why isn't this in other games?" Well, we're about to see it. And Dragon's Dogma, and it looks crazy good. That game. Uh, Damn, someone made Pan Am and Dragon. Jeez, it's, it's yeah, crazy. they've made so many people. It's it's nuts. Maybe I'll romance her in this. Then let's see what I can do. Uh, there's a whole Reddit with just like hundreds of these. It's great. Uh, and then finally, big rest in peace to Dragon Ball Z creator Akira Toriyama. Uh, he passed away since we last talked. I know John is a massive died in the wool fan of that dude's work. If you know anything yeah. about, you know, uh, the dragon quest games or dragon ball or freaking chrono trigger, chrono trigger, all of it, this Blue guy dragon, all, he had another one that he was working on that was all mad maxi in its style that was coming out. Oh, I forgot about that. Um, yeah. We saw trailers for that. Um, anyway, yeah, I think it's like desert or there's something to do with the desert. Um, Huge loss. The guy yeah, was only 68, and too young, freaking too many people. There are whole generations of people who drew or got into art or are now big time artist people who are all like, that's what got me his work. I, I was a fan of his art before I realized you could be a fan of somebody's art. Like, yeah. I, I remember an elementary school friend who brought in, imported, because he lived in Japan, or his family did, imported Dragon Ball Z manga. And I just remember staring at it and thinking, like, what is this? This is magic. This is crazy. Um, and I was the same way with Chrono Trigger. Like, I just would stare at the art of Chrono Trigger and not know why I was staring at it. Yeah. yeah. I he... didn't recognize that, like, oh, it's one dude and you like his artwork so much you can't stop looking at it. Yeah, dude had a dude had a he had this magic sauce, man, that guy. Real lost, terrible stuff. It was really great seeing all the tributes and stuff and all the people who were affected by uh him and all that. So, kind of a sad it was, story. It was really that. notable too, like because um I was playing WoW when the news came out and like that's all anyone was talking about across every zone too. Like it was just it had that tri- I guess you don't really think about it too much, you know, if you're not in the know on that stuff. Like, I didn't know. I knew yeah. there was a guy, but I, didn't, I wasn't very familiar. Yeah. But it seemed like a lot of people were. You oh, know, yeah. yeah. Everyone in, a, in an MMO just stops talking, and they're just all talking about that. It's kind of... Yeah. And there wasn't anyone who's, like, sarcastic, you know, because, wow, Chad's especially bad with stuff like that. Everyone's just like, oh, yeah, I know who that is. That's sad. And it was kind of crazy. Yeah, I haven't heard anybody very get... Very influential. No one got shitty about it, which is a nice change on the internet. I like seeing that. Um, but anyway, a uh, real bummer, uh, gone too soon, had an aneurysm or something, hematoma, subdural hematoma, which is a thing that comes out of nowhere and you do not have time to react. 
Uh, all right, let's move on to some quick correspondence. That's a good question. We got one here that is in the form of a voicemail and why they think this show is good. Let's see if we agree. Hey, uh, this is for Core, and I just wanted to say, I think I figured out why we all love the show so much. First, you have Bo, who's like a single dude, just living his life, doing his thing, doesn't give a fuck about anything, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> then you got John, who is younger with a family, new family, lots of kids. Well, his own kid and then a lot of other kids and just craziness and what a lot of like All people in today's world are dealing with at the moment, you know? And then you have Scott, who's already way past that point, who is uh, in his, <clears throat> you know, middle age, if you will. Sorry, Scott. Um, and uh, has, you know, older kids and a wife for a very long time. We all love Kim. Anyways. Uh, I just wanted to say, like, there's something for everybody is my point. We can connect each one of you on different levels and throughout different types of our life or different people we know, et cetera. So I just wanted to mention that. All right. Love you guys. Bye. I thought that was really nice. I think he's dead on. That was nice. Yeah. I think he's right. I don't like the whole <laughs> Scott's way past having kids. Way yeah, I was like, way. he started digging there. And I, you could tell he realized that. That, that he was like, and we like Scott because he's way, <laughs> way. Like, uh, I mean, because you got a wife and kids too. It's yeah. totally fine. I don't mind. I honestly don't. But I love it, and uh, I think he's right. I think we have a lot of sort of. The only thing that would make us more diverse is if we had a damn lady on here, you know, with some with some real female perspective that we lack. But outside of that, um, yeah, I think I think that's a fair way of putting it. I think it makes for good conversation and good opinions and. And all this sort of stuff. So thank you for that. We appreciate the thought. Uh, he sent that to 801-471-0462. You can also send uh, texts there like this one. Uh, this is from nobody's name. They just say, I made up a dad joke that I'm getting no love for, but I think you guys would appreciate it. What did the Dragonborn want from the refrigerator? A soda. Oh. Oh. Cheers, guys. Love core, he says. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. That was rough. That was Look, a rough one. Yeah. Uh, well, most dad jokes in my experience don't get love, so I would say you you did fine. Yeah. You, you could have uh, it could have been way worse. This is not bad. Yeah. We encourage you now go out into the world and so cringe. <laughs> 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 You're ready. You have passed the test. Well done, sir. You're ready to spread cringe throughout the land. Uh, we love hearing from you guys, so keep that coming uh, to us if you would. Also, email us, talk to the core at gmail.com if you prefer that method. Uh, before we get out of here, we have some new patrons this week. I want to thank <laughs> Seb, Kristen T., and Brandon Mattis, who all yes. joined us at patreon.com slash core show. They get no commercials. They get pre-show every week. They get bonus benefit stuff in the form of video game, uh, or sorry, specialized host shows every month. Uh, video game art in the mail, which I just barely put up. What did I do this month for uh, for this show? I want to look real quick. Let me it's just March, see. right? Yeah, so... March art is going to be... Hold on. Core. I just did it, so I know it's right here. Here we go. Oh, here, I'll show it to you guys, too. It's um, I made a fake cover for a 3DS game, and I changed the, uh, the art around a little bit. Let's just see if you can tell how I changed it or not. Um, but I redid Mar Mario and Luigi. Oh, and this damn. Thing. And uh, <laughs> yeah, there's Luigi's looking a little less than M. Mario's bit buck naked. And uh, they're on the cover of Mario and Luigi Superstar that Saga. The green guy on the left is in love. What oh, he's into saying? it. He's super into it. This is a little five by five print. And that's coming to uh, a certain level on our Patreon. If you want to be a part of that and get cool stuff uh, oh. and more benefits. <laughs> Why does Luigi have a, his nose piercing? Is yeah, look at his nipples. It's like it's straight ouchy. out through his nose. Yeah. yeah, look at his nips. Oh, his nipples too, eh? Yeah. Oh, jeez. I did his nips. I did his. I thought they uh, were radio dials. I didn't even notice they were nipples. They both got some hardcore uh, pit hair going. Uh, I mean, it's kind of nasty yeah, to be well, honest. The, you made these in Dragon's Dogma. Right? <laughs> <laughs> nope, hand drew these. But anyway, yeah, oh, I also no, gave I Mario joking. a tan. He's got a little tan on his legs and arms. See, he's all white underneath because he never takes his clothes off. Anyway, I like how thick his ankles are. Yeah, they're pretty thick. Also, yeah. I think he's got two right feet. That toe is in the right. I think you should talk to his doctor about deep vein thrombosis. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a good idea. A, I think he might have a DVT. <laughs> it's was, it was super fun to make, and I love shipping these out. So watch for that too, dear patrons. Um, all right. 
I think that's going to do it for today. Before we go, though, uh, well, frogpants.com slash core for everything else, everybody. I feel like I'm forgetting something important. I can't remember what it was. Oh, oh, uh, I know what it is. Matchup. Doing, uh, we don't have one this week. We're doing uh, um, uh, Unreal, 2000, or Unreal Tournament 2004 Assault Map Teams. We're trying to assemble Ooh. a bunch. If you're into that old game and, you're, and you want to sign up for this, go to the Patreon and look for the Play Retro group. That's where we're, uh, the whole thing's sort of happening. But anyone's welcome. Love to see some core people in there. If you like your Twitch skills, meaning your shooting skills, uh, circa 2004 and you want to play some Assault Maps, we're just trying to build some teams so we can have some, like coordination and stuff. Those Assault Maps are awesome. They're so much fun and uh, way, way bigger and stuff than your normal arena shooter. And we want to get some teams going. So we've got ways for you to play it if you don't have the game uh, already. If you do have it, it's even simpler. Like, lots of ways to do it. No reason not to. Uh, come check that out over at frogpants.com slash discord if you aren't already in there. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, Gram Fast Grandma is going to do this. With Internet be damned. Yeah. All right? So Fast Grandma, the mic's yours. Explain what we played this week, please. Grandson got me hooked up on the Wi-Fi, so this should be real easy to understand. We'll go real quick. Uh, Scott used the PlayStation 5 portal, and he played Unicorn Overlord and Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. I swear to God, those are games. He also played Boar Blasters and Honkai Star Rail. John's playing WWE 2K24, held Divers 2, Bellatro, and Baldur's Gate 3, and getting trash thrown at him by his neighbor. Bo played World of Warcraft, he's in a discovery, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Final Fantasy VII Remake, and he tried Spider-Man 2. <laughs> wow. You know what? That nice. went all right. That went all right yeah. at the end. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's it. It just, uh, it's just me. Yeah. Grandma's okay. Grandma's fine. Grandma's always fine. Maybe her grandson can set up my Wi-Fi. That yeah. Seems just, better. I'd, I'd say it was a low amount of sass on this week. That's all. But, yeah. You know, moving probably took a lot out of her. It's yeah, I get it. Yeah. She's black and probably white. Tired, what do you expect? Probably worn out. Probably exactly. Grumpy. Exactly. Yeah. That's a great way of putting it. Um, oh, my. Sorry, I just noticed this last cat thing you put in here. Who's that supposed to be? I don't know. I just, it's cursed. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Look at that chat. Look at that nasty ass thing. All right. Looking forward to that game. Uh, and more. We'll talk about it next week. I hope you guys have a fantastic gaming week. We'll be back next week with more. And without you, it's nothing. So be here. We'll see you then. Get more at frogpants.com. Did somebody call for goblin exterminators? What's that grand blue thing? That guy told yeah. Me. yeah. Somebody call for goblin exterminators? <laughs>